Thanks.
uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. You can get involved by calling 888-775-3773, 888-77-JESSE, J-E-S-S-E, JESSE. The biblical question for this week, it's a doozy. What are you committed to? What are you committed to? Amazing, huh? We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And if you're out and about anywhere in the world, you can um, listen to the show on your iPhone or iPad. I got to type a note here for a minute. Sorry, I'm slow a typer. I am typing. Okay. If you're out and about, you can listen to the show by calling the listen line at 641 on your iPhone or iPad, 641-793-1500-641. 793-1500. And don't forget to follow us on rumble.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Cozy.tv slash JLP. Cozy.tv slash JLP. All right. And hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell. Y'all know what to do better than I. And I do appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. So it's Thursday. It is Thursday. For those who are tuning in for the first time, uh, we get calls from people who are into the Bible better known as Bible thumpers, and they want to talk about it, and I do understand that. And sometimes during the middle of the week, we don't have a lot of time to spend time Bible thumping. But on Thursdays, I decided to set aside Thursdays. We deal with all all, all other issues, but I decided to set aside Thursdays to have more time, a little bit more time with the Bible thumpers, especially those who try to communicate. And so now Thursday is Bible Thumper Thursday. A knee, a knee, a knee. On our neck. On our neck. Why George? God. Why George? God, why? 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 I'm sorry, kid. This is igniting. Around this time, we will be dead. I am the daughter of two pastors. I have a strong moral core. I was trained to read and understand the Bible. You will emerge from that as an atheist. Uh, it's a disgrace. Uh, that we're supposed to be transformed by the renewal of our mind. He preached for us and let us, and didn't tell us what it is you mean. In your own words. Yeah, yeah, whatever you want to do. Well, there's a verse, there's a verse. You want him to preach? Yeah, yeah. Get up and preach. (laughs) 
the father, father cowered down to the crowd and let his son be crucified. What kind of daddy is that? What the? Uh, that's a beta dad. Beta daddy. Amazing. Talk about a spiritual battle. It is truly a spiritual battle. A warfare between good and evil, right versus wrong. And if you think it's anything other than that, you have another thought coming. What a mess. I was thinking about how human beings treat each other, and especially those who are supposed to be believing in God in one form or another. If you notice that people who say that they believe in God in one form or another, whatever that might be, in, in, in the true God or in Allah or Abba God or in, in the, uh, the so-called black Jew God, because there are black people who say they're Jew, their God, uh, or whatever. They are some of the meanest, nastiest, evil people on earth. They're, they're as bad as the, non, this, the people who admit that they don't believe in God. Have you noticed that? It is bad. It's worse than I've ever seen it. The last thing that Bible thumpers think about is praying for their brothers and sisters. They are just like the non-believers. They want to crucify you. They have jealousy and envy and, and, and strife and revengeful nature all in the name of God, in the name of Jesus. It is some of the... It's, I've never known it to be that way from so-called believers of God. And then they justify their revenge. Not understanding or knowing that it's not them, but it's the devil that got them trying to crucify others and then justify crucifying others. Whatever happened to them, pray for one another. And that's why I've said over and over again, as the word says, Anyone who has anger is a murderer. A murderer. It, that person is a murderer of those people. A murderer. But because anytime you have anger, it brings on the spirit of jealousy, envy, strife, or whatever, right? So it's not new. It's been going on forever. And I have an example of the world's first murderer. So it's not new. This is why you must be born again of the spirit of the Father. Because the spirit of God, in him there is no murder, right? Only love. No jealousy, no strife, no revenge, no depression, no suicidal thoughts. No uh, HDD and all that mess. Whatever you want to call it, right? It's only love. But I have an example of the world first murderer. This is from Genesis 4. So there's nothing new under the sun. Genesis 4. It's Bible Thump of Thursday. Now Adam knew Eve. Remember that story? Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she was conceived, and she conceived and bore Cain, saying, I have gotten a man with the help of the Lord. And again, she bore his brother Abel. Abel was a keeper of sheep, and Cain a worker of the ground. Remember that story in the Word? about Cain and Abel. This is when the first murdering situation happened 
in the world. So you wonder what happened to Cain and Abel. Why is Jesse saying that? Listen to this from Legends of History. Watch this. One day, Adam and Eve told their children that in order to show gratitude to God, they would need to perform a worthy sacrifice. Abel immediately chose one of his best newly born lambs to offer up to God, and though it was important to him, he believed that giving it over to God was far more important than keeping it for himself. When Cain learned about his brother's selfless sacrifice, he was puzzled. He told Abel that he should sacrifice something far less significant. After all, he himself was going to sacrifice some old dried fruit that he was planning on getting rid of anyway. Why his brother was going to give away something so cherished was beyond him. God is stated to have looked with favour upon Abel's sacrifice, but did not look with favour upon Cain's. The idea is that Cain and Abel both placed their offerings into a fire. Abel's lamb burnt up in the fire, and the flames roared as the sacrifice was consumed. But when Cain placed his offering into the fire, the sacrifice merely smouldered, and the fire itself died down. Cain grew jealous. He couldn't see the logic behind why God had preferred Abel's sacrifice over his. He grew angry at his brother, and it would lead him to become consumed with venomous thoughts. Cain lured his brother out into the fields one day, and struck Abel, killing him. Immediately, Cain realised what he had done. It was around the same time that God appeared to Cain, and asked him where his brother was. Cain lied to God, claiming that he didn't know, before infamously muttering, Am I my brother's keeper? Amazing! That is happening today in the Christian world like never before. And, and it's crazy to see it. It's so amazing. Are you Cain or are you Abel? Be honest with yourself. Are you Cain or are you Abel? All in the name of Jesus. There are a lot of jealous people out there. All in the name of Jesus. A lot of jealous people. In the Word. There are a lot of men that are going to churches looking for women to marry. And they end up marrying Cain, a jealous woman. And they catch hell. Get to know yourself and be honest with you, yourself. You don't have to tell the world, but at least be honest with you. Are you Cain or are you Abel? Do you have a jealous spirit, an envious, strife, destruction, revengeful, and you call it love? The first murder in the Bible is a man killing his own brother because he believed the thoughts, which is of the devil. All thoughts all lies all the time about anything. When will you stop worshiping thoughts? Thou shalt have no other God before God. And anyone who worship thoughts, the intellect, your feelings, those are examples of your Idol God. Fear is an idol God. You worship. How many of you worship in the Bible? The Bible is your idol God. And as long as the Bible is your God, you shall not know God. You shall have no other God before God. And there are so many people who worship the Bible. The Bible is the word of God, they say. And then they build lies around it. Why they should worship the Bible or why the Bible is the word of God. It become their idol and inwardly they're miserable. 
They're miserable, but they don't question. Okay, I worship the Bible. The Bible is my idol God. I believe the Bible is the word of God. Why do I still have fear? Why do I still have anger? Why am I, I have a hatred heart? They don't question it. What's wrong with you? Wake up. Know thyself. Know thyself. That was an example of the first murder that happened in the world, and it's happening now on a minute basis. The killing of the spirit, of the soul, all in the name of Jesus, or in the name of Allah, or the name of the priest or the pope, or whatever you, your God is. Isn't that amazing? That's deep. You have my uh, producers to thank for that, Sean. He put that together again. Talk about Bible Thumper Thursday, huh? Bible uh, Thumper! Bible Thumper, are you Cain or Abel? And if you be honest with yourself, 99.999.9% of the people are Cain and not Abel. But they are saying that they are Abel. They're lying. 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 A lion. Oh, one thing I want to mention. Men, grown men, 18 and over. Keep your mama out of your business. Your grandmama out of your business. You don't need to keep going to mama and telling her your business or your issues and anything. You're a grown man at 18 and older. I can't tell you the number of men I counsel with on a daily basis. Some have gotten married, some have not. But they got their mama all involved in their business, and she's giving them evil, wrong advice, selfish advice. And it's all centered around her. All around her. When I left home at 18, I can honestly tell you that not once when I left home at 18, and I did leave at 18, as men used to do in the good old days, they leave at 18. They don't stay under mama's skirt tail, right? But I not once told or asked my mother or grandmother or grandfather, anyone for advice, especially my mama or grandmama. And, and in some cases, guys, y'all, for some reason, you stay with mama. When you get married, you stay around mama or the woman's mama. God said, when you get married, take your wife, your family, away, away from your family, your blood family. Otherwise, you're just going to catch hell. What's wrong with you? And stop leaving your children with your mama, with grandmama. If she screwed you up, what makes you think she's not going to screw up your children? When will you wake up? That's just a sidebar note. You don't owe mama anything. Mama made you feel that way when you were a child. She put guilt upon you by making you angry. Your mama don't like you, and she like nobody. Anyway, are you a Cain or Abel? Are you a murderer? And so I read you the story about Cain and Abel, how Cain killed Abel. And in Genesis 4, and the Lord said, when you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to you its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. 
That's deep. And the Lord said, when you work the ground, it shall no longer yield to your strength, its strength. You shall be a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth. Have you noticed that everyone who has anger is a fugitive and a wanderer on the earth? They have no peace. They do not have perfect peace. They are a fugitive and a wanderer on earth because they're lost. All in the name of Jesus. They know the word. Or they may not know the Bible. They're still lost. I can't tell you the number of lost Christians that I have interviewed or met on the road somewhere or just talked to. They can quote the Bible like 90 going north. It reminds me of the black Israelite folks, how they quote the Bible. And the Jewish people who quote the Bible, some of them are lost too, but they know the word. They are fugitives and wanderers on the earth. They have no peace. As Matthew 5 says, anyone who is angry is guilty of murder. And yet, most people, not all, not all, not all, not all, but most people believe that anger is good. And they will fight you on this false idea that Christ was angry. And that God, they call God a vengeful, a vengeful God. They believe that because they are fugitives and wanderers on the earth. Get to know yourself so you can surrender and no longer become, be a fugitive and a wanderer on earth. You could be free. But unlike Cain, you got to admit that you're wrong within yourself. You got to see that anger is wrong. Anger is evil. There's no love in anger, period. Anyone who has anger is a murderer. And you, are say, you can say to the Christian, well, anyone who has anger is a murderer. And they are, because they are wanderers in the darkness of their imagination, they're lost on earth. They are justified in anger. Satan to give them words to make them justify being angry. Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. Another thing I noticed about a lot of Christians and, and so-called believers, they believe they have a free will. Oh, okay, will yourself to be a perfect peace. Will yourself not to be angry. Will yourself not to be revengeful or jealous, envious. They're making excuses why they can't will themselves to do that. What the? If, what's the purpose of having a will, a free will, if you can't will yourself to have perfect peace? What's the purpose of having a free will if it ain't no good to you or for you? Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. What a mess. Remember in the good old days when they used to tell stories from the Bible and it was so enlightening and funny and it, it was heartfelt. Remember those good old days? When will you wake up? Wake up! Wake up! And anyone that has anger, you are not awake. You may know the word. You may know how to meditate. 
but you're not awake. You may be awoke, but you're not awake. You cannot see. Because if you can see, you will have no anger. Zero. An awakened person cannot have anger. It's impossible. I'm not talking about an intellectual uh, uh, woke per person because there are a truckload of intellectual people who call themselves awake. And they're not. When you have anger, you are not awake. An awakened person is not of anger. Remember the good old days when they told you those amazing good stories in the, in the church? That has changed too. The Bible stories have changed. Watch this from the blaze. A Minnesota church live stream Sunday. A Minnesota's church live stream Sunday caught the moment when one of its pastor, quote unquote, led the congregation in a uh, recitation of the Sparkle co uh, Creed. Sparkle Creed. Watch this from Twitter you to rise in body or spirit and let us confess our faith today in the words of the Sparkle Creed. I believe in the non-binary God whose pronouns are plural. I believe in Jesus Christ, their child, who wore a fabulous tunic and had two dads and saw everyone as a sibling child of God. I believe in the rainbow spirit who shatters our image of one white light and refracts it into a rainbow of gorgeous diversity. I believe in the church of everyday saints as numerous, creative, and resilient as patches on the ace quilt, whose feet are grounded in mud and whose eyes gaze at the stars in wonder. I believe in the calling to each of us that love is love is love, so beloved, let us love. I believe, glorious God, help my unbelief. Amen. <laughs> Who wrote that creed? creed? Sparkle Creed. What the? That seemed like one of those devil worshiping churches. You know how there are uh, churches out there now that openly worship the devil? That. That rem that feels like one of those. Who wrote those creeds? What the? Uh, if ever we needed you, Lord, we need you now. What a mess. That church is no different than the churches that believe the Bible is the word of God. They have fear. Those people have fear. They have anger. Those people have anger. It's the same spirit. They just call it something else. 888-775-3773. Quick break. Your phone calls and super chats when I come back. Back in a moment. I have books that are amazing. I highly recommend you get them. Seven Guarantees Stuff to Spiritual, Family, and Financial Success guy. Even if you're not starting a business, but you have a job. Or you're on welfare. It can help you if you do. Be doers of the word. All right? From rage to responsibility. From rage. That's why I write about in the first chapter, especially how I overcame. Scam. How the black leadership exploits black Americans. They are using them. The blacks are too willing to be used. And then my last book, The Antidote, Healing America from the Poison of Hate, Blame, and Victimhood. They are all amazing books, and they are helpful. Go to rebuildingtheman.com if you want an autograph copy. 
or call 800-411-2663. Bible Thump of Thursday. What a mess. Y'all can be free or you can continue to live as a slave in your own mind. As a slave in your own mind. Or you can be free. Free your mind, and the rest will follow. It really will. Overcome thinking and walk in the spirit, you'll be free. But people don't want freedom. They love their hell. And they roam the earth to try to hurt other human beings so that they can stay in their hell. They get a false sense of life out of trying to hurt you. Isn't that amazing? Think about that. Human beings deliberately hurting other human beings so they can get a false sense of life. That's amazing to me. Anyway, the hate report is coming up at 9 a.m. this morning. The Hake Report from 9 to 11 Pacific time. The guy with the good hair, The Hake Report. And at 12 noon, the American Anchor Baby Show. He ain't an anchor baby for nothing. The American Anchor Baby at 12 noon today, Pacific time. Brand new episode of the TV tomorrow, Friday, if the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise at 12 noon Pacific time. I had an amazing conversation with Sibo and Snapper from the Sibo and Snapper YouTube channel. Watch this. Next time on The Fallen State. You obey him? I, I'm not too fond of the word obey. And have you forgiven your mother? She's 83. Well, you better tell her before she dies. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta forgive your mother, man. You just like her. I see her in you. Would you ever get married or no? I don't want that hell in my life. I always, I always, <laughs> can't you tell your friend his mama? Oh, no, 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 not afraid. Oh, uh, according to the show, we supposed to be on politics. I didn't know we were coming to just the show for this. I know, me either. What the? <laughs> 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 it was an amazing discussion. I had no idea it was going to go the way that it went, and neither did, did they. So that's tomorrow at 12 noon, thefallestate.tv. And remember, you can support The Fallen State by becoming a member on the YouTube channel there. All right? Thank you in advance. Also, to the Super Chatters, you can donate and have your comments read out loud at JLP, I mean, Jesse Lee Peterson dot live, Jesse Lee Peterson dot live, and buy me a coffee dot com slash JLP talk. Buy me a coffee. You can also ha- uh, support it on cash dot app slash bond JLP cash dot app. Slash bond JLP. Super chats. Super, super, super. Super chats. Good morning, sir. Good morning. And so it is Bible Thumper Thursday. Can you explain your shirt? Oh, yes, sir. This is um, Peter (laughs) being (laughs) crucified upside down. Amazing. Because he didn't want to be compared to his Lord. 
Yeah, Jesus. he was doing it out of honor and respect. That's so, what I heard. And so he said to the people, I know y'all about to... Show it more straight on. Well, I mean, please. Yeah. I'm glad that it doesn't look as... In real life, it looks really bad because I washed it and it kind of fell apart, but it looks pretty decent on the camera. It does. <laughs> and so Peter said, I know you guys... That was written by... No, never mind. I was going to talk about the painter. Is that Caravaggio? Yes, sir. We're Caravaggio now. <laughs> In heaven. Looking, looking up, up from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> they said... Never mind. I'm not going to say what they said about him. Um, what did they say about him? Uh, um, I'll tell you off air. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, did Peter say, I knew you, y'all about to crucify me, so hang me upside down? That's what the legend is. Says. According to the legend. He asked to be crucified upside down? Upside down. Really? Because he didn't want to be... He didn't want to seem like he was trying to be like Jesus or something like that. He was the guy that said that you are the son of God, right? Yep. And he didn't say you are God, but the son of God. Yep, and that's why Jesus said, I will build my yeah. church upon your rock. Why don't the Christians understand that? Peter was with Jesus. They were having lunch. And some of them say Peter was the first pope. Yeah. Peter was with Jesus. And they were having lunch or breakfast or dinner. And and they were saying, and we were out there, we were out there witnesses, and people were asking all kinds of things and saying all things about you. And he asked, well, what do you, who do you say I am? And they all said different little things. And then he asked Peter. Peter said, you are the son of God. He like, right on, Peter. What the? You're the guy I'm going to build my church on. Because you you saw it for yourself. No one told you. Isn't that amazing? And everybody running around calling him God. And all those other disciples were calling him different names, too. He didn't say, I'm going to build my house on y'all. <laughs> exactly. Right. He said, you see that I'm the son, and I'm going to build my church on you. What the? How Thomas come the Christian there? missed that, Hake? There's a lot of stuff we miss. And Peter was with the guy. Yeah, right. It's true. And Jesus would have said, no, Peter, I'm God. I ain't building my house on you. Is you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, super chat. Over on uh, Streamlabs yesterday, Mike Young on Live stated, Hey, Jesse, James Hake and Hassan. This is a donation message. I don't know if you guys are aware of a white guy was forced to apologize to a Chinese man for being rude to him at an airport in China. But yet, they can come to the U.S. and be disrespectful with no apology. What a mess. What a mess! <laughs> Thank you, I wasn't aware of that. <laughs> I hadn't heard that one. Me either. Jean Benoit, Jean Benoit, Benoit, I forget, he told me, uh, Canadian man, Gave a super chat on uh, the Bond Archive Sunday service. A sticker of a pear-shaped guy with uh, <laughs> boxing gloves and a um, headband and a leaf sticking out of the stem, sticking out from the stem, and a cape and socks. Nice. Thank you, man. Thank you. Flying through I the appreciate air. Appreciate it. Yeah. Thank you. Martinez D on Streamlabs says, Jesse, you'd appreciate Romans 7, 18 to 20. Perhaps James can read the whole two verses from his phone because... Of space limitations. Wow. Uh, I'll just repeat the last part. You can do it. Buy me a coffee. I'll just repeat the last part. Now, if I do what I do not want, it is no longer I that do it, but sin that dwells dwells in within me. Amazing. Thank you. Nice. Nice. Thank you, Martinez D. I'm just seeing that, so I didn't... I, was, I'm, I come unprepared. <laughs> the key on Streamlabs says, What are you committed to? They say. That's the biblical question. What are you committed to? And he says, none other than the truth. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Greenwall with a... I'll put my little two cents in on Sunday. Nice. Greenwall with a diamond on DLive. Uniparty plays good cop, bad cop. Dems, bad cop. GOP, good cop. Thank you. Amazing. Breaking down the people. <laughs> Games for Rack gave a diamond with no message. Thank you, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. 
And, oh, man, this feels old. The We had some democracy chat that we never got to. Let's read a few biblical question responses. What are you committed to? Julieta, or Julieta, says on Twitter, being a truth speaker while remaining kind and compassionate. Amazing. Thank you. Uh, Solaire on Twitter says, reminding people that it's amazing to be white. <laughs> with a capital W. That's right. Somebody <laughs> better appreciate being white because they're trying to wipe the white people out. Did you see that case in New York where the white man, uh, according to a report, uh, had an altercation with a black guy on the train because the black guy was threatening him to hurt the folks? And the white man is in jail. They're trying to hang him up. The black guy did the same thing on the train, and somebody died. He was protecting himself from this guy, according to the report. He and his girlfriend. The black guy is out free, but not the white guy. What a, a, a two-party system we have, a two-party justice system we have in America. It's just blatant now. It's crazy. It's just, abs- but I understand evil. I understand it. Thank you, though. Thank you. David says, in answer to the biblical question, what are you committed to? He says, fairness, golden rule in action. That's on Facebook. Amazing. Thank you. Golden rule is do unto others as you would do unto, have them do unto yourself. Um, right on. Unto you, I mean. I'll put my two cents in on Sunday. Uh, over on uh, IG... Dason says self-development. That's what he's committed to. Amazing. Thank you. <laughs> Marv Anthony says getting on your show and talk to you. To talk to you. <laughs> That's what he's committed to. <laughs> Amazing. Um, Six Buntry says my children. That's what he's committed to. Or she. Nice. And uh, Thank you. I forget if I read this one. Shofar says, asking, this is on Gab, asking Holy Spirit to assist me in sinning less. That's what I'm committed to. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> and uh, that's, that's enough for now, I think. Thank, Thank you, you guys. All. Appreciate the response. Appreciate responses. it. <sighs> Amazing. Let me go out to Canada and talk to a first time caller, Jamal. Jamal, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Jesse. How are you doing? All this well, sir. I just discovered your show, and you, you give me a lot to think about, so I really appreciate that. Right on. Um, so I had a question. I heard you say earlier in your show uh, that some lost people believe that the Bible is the Word of God. Yes. And recently, recently I've been trying to use the Bible as a guide, I guess, to live a little more righteously or honorably, and I'm wondering... Is that the best way to go about that, if the Bible isn't the Word of God? Before I respond to that, and I will, what made you think, you say you're trying to use the Bible to live what now? To live more righteously or honorably. And what does that uh, mean? To guide, to, guide my, to guide my actions, I guess. What does that mean to use the Bible to live more righteously? Um, I, I know it's a book of instructions, so I figured that some of the scriptures would help me uh, move in the real world a little better, like uh, treating my neighbor uh, like how I would treat myself and stuff like that. And so, do you treat your neighbor, uh, how long have you been reading the Bible? How, pardon me? How long have you been reading the Bible? Uh, I grew up in a Christian house. But I just recently started to turn back towards uh, Christianity, I guess, because I wasn't the most religious, um, and I'm just recently seeing what's going on around the world, I think, that and, it, it would have been the best. And so how long have you been reading the Bible since you started again? Uh, about a week or two, Oh, I see. Honest. And are you treating others the way you treat yourself? I wouldn't say that, no. I try to, <laughs> but, I, but I fall sometimes. And so it's not working? Uh, it, yeah. I, 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 I mean, but it's not working because of me, though. 
And so I'm not I'm, what, I'm not being as committed as I'm supposed to be. I so guess. so why read the Bible for that purpose, and you're not ready to be committed to that? A good question. Like, uh, maybe I don't see another alternative to that. I, I guess that's the best uh, option I see right now. To, but um, you're not. You, you you say you're not committed to treating others the way you would like, the way you treat yourself, right? And and so why are you reading the Bible to do that if you know you're not committed to? It? Why do you think it's going to work if you're not committed? Uh, I figured it would be a good place to start, and then I guess I work my way up to be more uh, disciplined and, and, and committed to it. Um, oh, but, so you're yeah, not ready yet to com- treat people the way you treat yourself? I think I am. I want to be. So why <laughs> I, 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 So why are you doing it? Be. You read the Bible. You said the Bible is for that. You read the Bible for that purpose, and you... S- now you're saying you are committed. Why are you doing it? Uh, you know, sometimes you forget, uh, you know, and fall short, I guess. Um, but but I, I want to try, though. I want to, to be uh, treat everyone like I would treat myself and, like, follow the word and, and do as it says. Right. I understand that. Up. I definitely understand that. And what do you mean by falling short? You uh, fall short. Like, Stumble, like um, one day I might get, like you say, sometimes you get angry because I'm lost, right? Uh, and in that fallen state and stuff, sometimes I get uh, sad or I'm not in the mood or I'm miserable, and I might, you know, say something to somebody I don't really mean, but in the t- in that moment I'm, you know, uh, emotional, so I might say, you know, right. I might act a certain way that I shouldn't. Where did you get the words from? Uh, fall, I fall short. Where did you get those words from? Uh, think church. Uh, hearing a pastor talk about falling short before I, the glory. I wonder what they mean by thing. that. They fall short. You, you just, I heard, I've heard the Christian use those words before, but I never yeah, really yeah. ask us what do they mean by that and where do they get those words. But anyway, the Bible is not the word of God. It is the word that God gave men and they put it on a piece of paper, right? So it's a word from God, but the word of God is written in your heart. It's within. It's made flesh. The mm. word of God. And it's that word or those words you should live by. You're never going to be able to live by the Bible if you think that the Bible is the word of God. It will just become intellectual knowledge. And you will always maintain an evil heart and fear. The, the okay. word is in you now. It's at hand. It's eternal life. It's right here, right mm-hmm. now. Okay, yeah. I see, I see what you're saying. Have you heard me say, well, yeah. do you want to live by the word within? Yeah. You notice how okay. crazy the, the, the people who read the Bible and your family members, your friends, and whomever, your church member, you notice how angry and... My, my, and yeah, my mother's like that, actually. Yeah, nutty as a like fruitcake. She, she could quote everything from the Bible, but she's angry at my dad, and it's, it's weird. Yeah. So do you, if you want to live by the word of your heart? Yeah. You got to forgive your mother. You got to apologize yeah. to her for resenting her. Her mother did it to her, and she hates your father, and that's why she, all in the name of Jesus, she's into the Bible, but she does not know God at all. And so you got to apologize for resenting her for what she had done to you. She can help herself. And when you do that, God, when you truly see that, yes, I do resent her, and I'm wrong for resenting her, and, and, and forgiveness is apologizing for resenting her. That's what judgment is, right? And God will forgive you, and he will cause you to be born of the Father, of him, of the Spirit of God, and then you will live by the words in the heart. And you read the Bible sometimes, but you see the words in the Bible will be made clearer for you. 
because you would be living from the word in your heart. But you got to forgive yeah. your mother. Oh uh, yeah. So I just I should just call her up and say sorry for her. Resentment. And then forgive your father for not protecting you from her. He can't handle her. He's afraid of her. She is his mother too. He's married to the woman he hate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> uh, are you, how old are you? Uh, 27. Nice. Are you able to FaceTime with your mother? Yeah, yeah. She moved away from, so I'm from the Bahamas, and she, she ran away to North Carolina. Oh, good. <laughs> I'm glad she's far yeah. away from you. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> so if you can FaceTime with her and your father, because you have to forgive your father for not protecting you from her, he he loved yeah. you, but he couldn't help it. He didn't know how to deal with her. Yeah. And so if you could FaceTime with her and, and hey, mother, I'm sorry for resenting you. I realize now you can help yourself. And have no expectation from her at all. Don't expect her to apologize or admit that she was wrong or anything. Whatever she does is totally on her and has nothing to do with you. And don't ask her for forgiveness God will forgive you when you apologize for resenting her. Okay, I got you. And then the word will be made clear to you. And so when you do read the Bible, you'll be just reading about what's happening, what happened according to the Bible, but you will see the truth of it. It will be shown to you. Okay, I got you. So you got to face your mother, though, so you can be born of the Father. Yes, sir. I'll, I'll get on that. Have you heard about the silent prayer yet? Yeah, I heard you speak about it on a few of your videos. Have you given that a try? No, but I, I, I should. Yeah, uh, do, the do, sil- just- do the silent prayer. And then, because you're never going to be able to live, you're never going to be able to treat people. You're already treating people the way you're treating yourself because your heart is of anger. So you treat people, you have anger in your heart, so you have hatred of the heart. So you're treating everybody the way you're already treating yourself. But when your heart changes, you're going to treat people the way you treat yourself because you will be of love. Your heart will be of love, and that's how you automatically treat everyone, even your enemy. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. Let me know how it goes, Jamal. All right. Have a good day. You too, buddy. Amazing. This hour is up. Two more hours to go. Hake is coming in with the hate news, not the fake news, but the hake news. And I'll be back in a moment. Two more hours to go. We have a counseling service, and I have to admit, thanks to God, it is the best counseling service on this side of heaven. I counsel with men and women, families, individuals around the world. Most people are unhappy, they're miserable, they have rough lives, they're depressed, suicidal, young and old, of all races. I understand, I know why, and I do understand it. Because exactly what's happening in me is happening with everybody outside of me, inside of them. And I've noticed that with those who really, really, really want to understand, they overcome it just like that, out of one counseling session. If you need counseling, you can go to rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. 800-411-BOND. Best counseling service on this side of heaven. They found what they think are body parts by that titan- titanic sub debris. And Putin, still large and in charge, the boss of Russia, they are saying they want to establish that in everybody's mind. And uh, an airstrike in Myanmar, Myanmar, kills 10 plus, allegedly by the military junta, who took over in 2021. They had a coup uh, back in the day. And scientists found a planet that shouldn't exist. Explain that, space deniers. And Idris Elba, that black guy, he's over the idea of being black 007 ever since it turned racial. This is the end of hour one of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. It is Bible Thumper Thursday. 
June 29th, 2023 AD. Stay tuned for Hour 2. Jesse Lee will be right back to your calls. Uh, the lines are full right now. But first, fake news, not fake news. Poor Titan passengers. Call me Nonsense Network CNN reports, quote-unquote, presumed human remains. Uh, were recovered from the debris field of the doomed Titan submersible, little baby submarine. The uh, U.S. Coast Guard said that the uh, discovery was among the evidence that arrived at a Canadian pier nearly a week after authorities determined the Titanic-bound vessel imploded in uh, north the North Atlantic, killing all five people aboard. Rest in peace, guys. The company that owns the remotely uh, operated vehicles that brought the Titan's wreckage to the surface uh, has successfully completed the offshore work, they said. The U.S. medical professionals will analyze the remains for more insight into the tragic voyage down to the bottom of the ocean. Titan was made of carbon fiber and titanium, weighed 23,000 pounds. Wow, that's, that's big for a baby uh, submarine, according to OceanGate, which operated the craft. Investigators say that voice recordings and data from the mothership that carried the sub will be examined. And Russia, Russia is working to reassert Vladimir Putin's, Putin's authority after the Wagner, Wagner mercenaries, military insurrection that challenged his leadership over the weekend, according to Kami Nonsense Network, if you believe them. The Kremlin planned a series of events designed to show that unity and solidarity, which is a communist buzzword, of the state and the military under his leadership. Putin said he did not doubt the support of Russian citizens during the Wagner rebellion, according to the Kremlin readout on Wednesday. Wagner chief Yevgeny uh, Prigozhin planned to seize two top Russian military officials when he launched the short-lived mutiny. According to the Rhino outlet Wall Street Journal, Globo Homo, right, Wall Street Journal, citing Western officials, Russia's Federal Security Service learned of the plot two days before it was due to take place, forcing Prigozhin, Yevgeny, to change his plans and launch a march toward Moscow instead, according to the report. And Myanmar, that airstrike, killed at least... Ten civilians and injured over a dozen others in Myanmar. Myanmar, local officials said the deadly attack earlier this week, according to Kami Nonsense Network, was the latest in the military junta's campaign, campaign for control since seizing power in a coup in 2021. Ma Kin Hla and her five siblings didn't have time to run when a fighter jet buzzed over the village in the central Sagang region. Her siblings' bodies lay scattered around her. After the strike, my entirely, entire body is shaken by rage, she said. I don't know who this lady is. I guess she's just a survivor. The uh, jet dropped three bombs during the attack near a monastery, near killing three women and seven men, including a monk, according to local officials. The attack also destroyed several homes nearby. Scientists uh, discover a plot. The heck? Um... Not a plot. They spot a planet <laughs> that shouldn't exist. Jupiter-like planet named Hala. Hala, H-A-L-L-A. Maybe it's Haya. Haya is located, or Aja is, Aya oh, is located 520 light years from Earth. It may be an unlikely survivor after its host star's temper tantrum. Explain that, space deniers. They're personifying stars. I'm James Hake. Now back to JLP. Hour two.
uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We're also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the second hour of the show today. You can get involved by calling 888-775-3773, 888-77-JESSE. The biblical question for this week, what are you committed to? What are you committed to? What are you committed to? We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson.com slash show. jessaleepeterson.com slash show. And if you're out and about, busy, whatever you might be doing, working out, anywhere in the world, out at the grocery store, whatever, you can listen to the show on your iPhone or iPad by calling the listen line on Top Stream Live there on your iPhone or iPad at 641-793-1500. That's 641-793-1500. And don't forget to follow us on Cozy.tv slash JLP. Cozy.tv slash JLP and Rumble. You got to know how to rumble.com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Like, follow, subscribe, and all those things. It's Thursday, and every Thursday is Bible Thumper Thursday. Rejoice, O people of God, rejoice. (laughs) Being Christian, being pro-choice are absolutely consistent because Christianity is a feminist religion. <laughs> While he was out in the community, oh. Bible thumping about salvation and family values. All my life I had to fight. At home, <laughs> he was wailing on me. But I kill him dead for I let him be. Bible thumping. Christian men must listen. They must sit at the feet of Christian women. I hate everybody, but you also <laughs> love everybody. First Bible teacher that Jesus had was his mother. My mom is my shepherd. That's problem. I shall not want. There are a few verses in the Bible that may point to affirming gender transitions. There is neither Jew nor Gentile. There is neither male nor female. Because Christianity is a feminist religion. <laughs> what the? Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. The world gone crazy. It's no wonder all the wrong people in the right places to make sure that my country never returns. To make sure. What a mess. Let me go to Dean. A first time. There's one line open at 888-7753-773. Let me go to Dean. uh, uh, First time call out of South Carolina. Dean, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Yo, what's going on? All is well. Um, did you hear about... Did you hear about the, um, what you call it, alien sightings that's been going around? Right, I've heard about that. I've seen it on Fox News. Mm. Well, I see um, there was, like, this news report about, like, the, like, spaceship that someone saw. And I came to a conclusion. I was like, either, you know, there's definitely something, like, demonic going on. But, or it's five black lesbians. (laughs) <laughs> that the? are coming off that shit. So do you believe in UFOs? Uh, no, I don't. You don't believe? And you think it's something spiritual? Mm-hmm, I definitely do. And, and why do you think that? Because nowhere in the Bible does it point to UFOs being real. But, you know, I feel like it's 
a massive, like, that event or that taking place of someone seeing a UFO, I feel like it's like the devil trying to deceive us from what the truth actually is. That's what I believe in. You can be right. We talked about that one day on this show. Uh, it's, it may be demonic spirits that somehow or another is breaking through there, but I, I don't know yeah. for sure at this point, but it mm -hmm. definitely appears that something is going on. And I also wonder if they are discovering these things, and it, and it sounds like they've been seeing these things for a long time. It's nothing new. I wonder why does the government hide it from we the people? I want the people to panic. I don't know if that's true or not either. Yeah, I've seen like a signing on TV like um, during quarantine. And um, people thought, you know, that's whenever people, everyone started thinking, oh, there must be other life forms. I still don't believe that. Yeah. It's interesting. Have you ever seen one? No. Do you know if anyone who's one. seen it? Um, I don't think, well, I think one of my uh, grandparents seen them, but I don't know for sure. Oh, okay. I mean, yeah, I, I'm not sure, D, what's going on. It seems as though something is going on. I'm just not sure yeah. what it is at this point. Yeah, but, um, um, I think that's going to be a, a big lie people are going to use probably during the rapture when everyone's taken away. Amazing. You know, they'll be like, oh, aliens just took everybody. And You, you believe you know. in a rapture? Mm hmm I believe it. And, and what is the rapture that you believe in? What is it? That all people who believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord, their Savior. Come back to the phone. Well, oh. Wait, what you say? Okay, speak right into the phone. Oh, well, all people who believe in Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior will be taken up whenever God calls. I never study much on the rapture, but I, I need to study more on that. So then why do you believe it if you don't know much about it? Well, that's a good, um, that's a good reason, Jesse, but I heard about No, that was it. a question. Oh, why do you believe it if you don't know much about it? Well, I heard about it. That's why. That's why I believe it. I heard about it from, um, I don't know, but I heard about it. And so why would you? I don't know. I know, but why would you believe it then? And then you repeat it and you don't even know much about it. You just heard about it. But you're waiting. You believe in something that might not be true. Um, I heard John MacArthur saying something about it. He's a preacher that I follow, but I don't know much about it. That's, so I don't know. And when you ask John about my it. My father what, taught me. Oh, so, my father taught me about it. And so, the but, rapture. and so did you know that you believed it and you don't know a lot about it? Yeah, he knows and he believes it too. I don't know much about it. Okay, but but ha did you know that you didn't know much about it, but yet you believed it? Yeah. Amazing, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Thank you, T. I appreciate you, man. Thank you. All right, buddy. Hope. Thank you. Uh, I don't know. Uh, and see why you need to know that you know that you know for yourself. You need to examine yourself. Know thyself. Because a lot of, all of us, until you wake up and saw them all waking up, believe me, you don't know until you know that you know that you know. So when you hear something, it's just knowledge, and let the knowledge pass so the understanding will come. Don't hold on to the knowledge of it. All right? Knowledge is, you hear the knowledge, but let it pass. You want to live by faith. You want to live by the Spirit, not by knowledge. People with knowledge are dumb. They think they know, they just don't. Look how the world is screwed up now because of knowledge. You listen to the so-called experts and they have no clue. 
They have degrees, which they pay for a buku money for, but it's not worth the paper that is written on. What a mess. 888-7753-773. Let me go to Jason out of Buffalo, New York. Jason, welcome to the show. I also want to answer your biblical question. What's, um, what are you committed to? Get an apology for you telling me that I was wrong. That you're wrong? Yes. About, about what? your song. About, the song that you sing. What song was that? The one that you say when I think of the world today. And what, and what about it? That's not what the song says. What does it say? It says, when I look in the world today. When you what? When I look in the world today, and not when I think into the world today. You said think. So when I, was, when, I, when I said what I said about the song, that's why I made me say what I said, because I started thinking like think. When somebody thinks, they're not like actually there. But when somebody looks, they're in the middle of stuff. And so you hung, know you hung up on that? What the? No, I'm wrong. You're not giving me an apology for me being wrong. What kind of apology? I mean, I'm not. Uh, you told me I was wrong. You told me I was wrong. I wasn't wrong. Oh, uh, you were. So you looked the song up and it said, "When I think of the world, or when I look on the yeah, world." That's like you said. People with knowledge is dumb, but like that's like I didn't know, so I looked it up. So now I have the knowledge, so I can come back and tell you that you were wrong. And so, so you think it's worse? Not doing. You think it's? I see a lot of songs where the words are not just the same as they're written. And so you you want apology? <laughs> hold on, hold on. No, you don't. No, you don't. That's a lot. You want a apology no for song. that, about what you want? Come you want on, a, man. You want apology? I want. I want apology for you telling me okay. that I was wrong. But how I'm you sorry. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Okay. You you want? Not, not a, I'm giving you apology. I'm sorry. Okay. You went wrong. You were right. You feel better? Thank you. Thank you. You feel yeah, better? I feel a lot better. All right. Even though it was sarcastic and all that. You feel like, better? That's not right. Like, okay. I'm glad, buddy. How old? He 40 something years old. Right. What? Uh, no wonder he's still living at home with mama. Thank you, uh, man. Um, I want to give you this, and then I'll get back to your calls. Talk about grandpa and tell me about the good old days, right? And I've told you that there are all the wrong people in the right places to make sure that my country never returns. It's like they stay up all night to try to figure out what can they do to make sure they inflict pain upon the people and that the country never returns. I want to give you a perfect example of that and your tax dollars at work. Stupid people with dumb ideas, right? This is from the Blaze. The local government in Los Angeles faced mockery for a program meant to provide shades as a part of its gender equity action plan. Watch this from CBS. New sunshade structure with a solar powered light at this Westlake bus stop on 3rd and Union is raising some eyebrows. It's part of a privately funded LA Department of Transportation pilot program called La Sombrita. It debuted last week at four bus stops around the city prioritizing low income areas with late night service. I was wondering why it was here because I was like, well, what's the point? I, I guess. It's for shade. LADOT <laughs> says a survey of women who rely on transit requested more shade and lighting at bus stops. Especially for we, women that stand <laughs> and wait for the bus late at night or for the cause of their safety. Yeah. Well, you see the bus shelter right across How the street, which LADOT care? says takes a lot of time, money, and it has to follow other rules to be able to put one in place, unlike this, which they say is a simple, easy, quick solution, no extensive cost, and it does provide some shade. The shade at any given point can provide shade to two to four people, which is about the amount of, uh, amount of people who are waiting for a bus at any given time. 
But criticism has been swift online with people comparing this to a cheese grater. And another tweet questioning the amount of shade, saying unless you have a couple of these at each location, there's no way a fearful individual like me can get shade when one is already in use. LADOT says the real test will come this summer when it is hot and they can always make adjustments and work toward the next solution. <laughs> Can you get any dumber than that? Can you get any dumber than that? A waste of time, a waste of thinking, and a waste of money. What a mess. And that stupid woman talking about, oh, because if for the women because we, we have to take the bus and we have to stand out here alone some, sometimes. Well, how is that going to stop crime? Why don't they take that money and hire some police officers, some men to protect the innocent? Why don't they take that money and shut down the borders, deport the illegal aliens back to wherever they came from? Why don't they take that money and stop crime in our country, lower the taxes, and get rid of this stupid, crazy idea, made-up idea of equality, gender equality? What in the world is going on? Grandpa, tell me about the good old days. I told you, all the wrong people in the right places to make sure that my country never returns. The Blaze is reporting that the Los Angeles Department of Transportation said that each of the bus shades will only cost about $10,000. Only, right? It's not their money. And these are intellectual people. And you go to college to become dumb. That's all college does for you. It makes you become dumber. It takes away and erases all common sense and makes you dumb. And now you're walking around with your little degree thinking you're smart. And you want people to think that you are smart. Grandpa. Tell me about the good old days. And remember we talked about the people loving the animals? And that the animals, the people think the animals love them back? The people loving the animals? And the animals loving them back? The animals don't love you. Animals don't have love. Now, if you want to have a pet, have a pet, but don't think it love you. And don't be trying to treat it like it's a human. Because you're going to go nuts if you do. Oh, I'm sorry, Hassan. You're going to go nuts if you do. What the? And the only reason you think that the animal is loving you back, because you're in a fallen state. And you're, you're in an animal like nature. That's why you must be born again, overcome the fallen state. The animals don't love you. And the animals got the people doing some crazy, well, I can't blame the animals for it. People doing crazy things because they think the animals, they're getting love from the animals and they think they're giving love. You're not even giving love to the animals. Anyone that thinks they're giving love to an animal is in an animal fallen state. I was talking to a person yesterday, happened to be a woman, and she said that she almost, got, or she got, either she said she almost got bitten in the face by an animal or a dog or something. She was like somewhere, and she saw this dog, and she rushed down, went down toward the dog to rub it, and her face got really close to the dog. And the dog tried to bite her in the face. The dog didn't like that. <laughs> I'm like, what now? 
How about don't go near the animals? This is from CNN. Yellowstone National Park has urged visitors to protect wildlife after a stream of incidents that have left animals killed and endangered. Why is this from ABC and NBC? Enter a national park, you're usually going to see some kind of signage that requests people respect the nature and respect the wildlife. But Yellowstone officials actually say lately there have been so many egregious actions, they were compelled to release a public statement urging visitors not to put themselves or the animals in danger. After a string of frightening close encounters at Yellowstone National Park, this morning park officials are urging tourists to respect and protect the animals, saying in a statement some actions by visitors have led to the endangerment of people and wildlife and resulted in the death of wildlife. Authorities are now investigating tourists who they say this Memorial Day weekend grabbed a baby elk and took it inside their car to the police station. And last month, a man from Hawaii, now charged with intentionally disturbing wildlife, was seen moving a newborn bison after it was separated from its mother. Yellowstone Park Rangers were forced to euthanize the calf when they couldn't reunite it with the herd. We're also seeing a lot of videos like this. A Yellowstone tourist taking a selfie next to a bison which experts warn is seriously risky behavior. There you go. Keep going. Last year, this woman at a Texas national park tried sneaking by a bison. Oh, no, no. She was gored in the back and spent six days in the hospital. Experts say always have a plan of exit if a bison gets too close. But of course, the best plan is to always maintain a safe distance of 75 to 100 feet. <laughs> What the? What do you think about that? Have you been there? I have. And did you rub the bison? <laughs> <laughs> no, but they are right in the middle of the road, so y it is pretty crazy because they're they stop they stop the flow of traffic. And I mean, it's is that a reason to get out and rub them <laughs> and take a selfie. <laughs> it's not. What the? So what do you think about the people and loving their animals? I, I mean, I understand it. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have a, comf uh, a bison comfort? No. When I saw the bison up close um, and I saw a moose, I was like, what? The? It is. It's like dinosaur prehistoric level. It's very... It's mind blowing to see it up close. And did you want to take it home and let it be your comfort? No, I wanted to stay in the car and keep on moving. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Amazing. So, what do you think about this woman taking a selfie right next to the bison? I mean, it's risky business, but you know it does. But I mean, it. You know, nowadays people have made things seem like you know, oh, it's safe, you know, and. You know, the park, these parks and stuff have kind of encouraged folks to think that it's okay and, you know, take video, promote our park. And, um, whoa. What happened? I don't know. Oh, okay, it's back. Um, anyway, I, I, yeah, it's, it's dangerous. <laughs> but it's scary. I mean, a moose up close and personal. Is uh, no joke. I know. What a mess. Yeah. Why is that going in and out like that? I'm not sure. What the? Amazing. Okay. Amazing. They're working on the video there. It's actually weird. Uh, so that's. And maybe the bison. <laughs> Is that of the UFOs? The bison. It's true. But I will say Yellowstone, 
Yellowstone in that area yeah. is gorgeous. It's beautiful. Oh yeah. I mean, it, I ain't been to Israel, but it's. <laughs> you have not lived until you go to Israel. I would imagine it's right next to it. Everyone, before you walk, leave this earth, visit Israel. If you don't like the Jews, that's on you. But visit Israel. It is so nice. <laughs> Amazing. Let me go to... Um, Samantha, a first-time caller, caller out of Holland. Uh, let's see here. Samantha, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hello, Jesse. How are you doing? All is well, Samantha. How are you? I'm, I'm also well. I'm also well. Thank you for the call, taking my call. You're welcome. Um, yeah. I'm, um, well, I'm following you like, like two and a half years or something. And, yeah, in the meantime, um, yeah, I forgave my mom. And, yeah, since then, uh, crazy st stuff is happening. I notice uh, where I formerly was catering it to her. Um, yeah, I, I see now I have the courage to to stand up and to speak my mind. And yeah, since then I notice like for little things he doesn't talk to me. That kind of stuff. And and I know that that's a good progress. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but now, um, yeah, so I'm really noticing the difference between being in my mind and being in the present. And now I'm also doing the, uh, the silent prayer every day. And, uh, yeah, I really, really notice that uh, when, when I'm not in the present. And since I'm more and more in the present, I do notice that there's nothing going on in my life. It's very quiet, and I do notice that, um, yeah, when when I'm like uh, feel it, I'm in my mind and noticing it, and start being in the present. Then I really notice that there's a lot of energy in my body. Sometimes it hurts, you know. Sometimes it's it, in my lungs or in my in my stomach, and yeah, my question to you is: Is that a process? Which is uh, how long does it take to when that go, will it go over? <laughs> a good question. Um, from now on, don't worry about how long it's going to take. Long is not a medical issue, right? But the pain that you're feeling in the body, spiritual pain, right? It's the death mm -hmm. of the ego. You know, God said we have once to die, once to live. Well, that's the death of the ego dying. And if you didn't identify with it, if you didn't, if you knew for sure that it wasn't you, it's not you, it's this thing that made a home in your mind and in your body, the emotions of the body. If you stop identifying mm -hmm. with it, it can be over with just like that. But because it feels like you're dying, and you are identified with it, it's taking longer than it normally would take. But don't mm -hmm. worry, it's going to die. Just let it die, and don't worry about how long. You just stay present, and you're going to be fine. Okay. Can you hold on one minute, yeah. Samantha? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Okay, hold on. I got to take a break. 888-7753-773. Back in a moment. Now, I totally disagree with the way things are going, but you can't be angry because that's what the enemy wants. He wants to control you. They do things to make you mad so they can control you. It's like being married. And the wife would do things to make you mad or she would do things to make you feel good. And men do that to women too when they want something from the woman, especially sex. They'll make her feel good or they'll make her angry. 
And the woman got to have to say, you don't want to be angry. You want to speak up. You want to disagree with what's going on. It's wrong, but do not be angry. Then you won't have fear. You won't have doubt. You won't have worries. You'll be able to see, but you got to stay away from anger. That's why you must forgive your mothers and your fathers so that you can overcome the spirit of anger. It's a spirit and it's wicked. Nothing good in anger because it has no love. Bro. You need love to defeat evil. And love is not a weakness. It's a strength. It's from God. It's his nature. Okay, it's supposed to be working again. 888-7753-773. The Hake Report coming up at 9. The Hake, H-A-K-E Report, dot com. And James Hake is on fire. And the American Anchor Baby at 12 noon Pacific time. After the Hake Report, the Anchor Baby Show. You don't want to miss the Anchor Baby it's amazing. It is absolutely amazing. We have the best counseling service on this side of heaven. If you need counseling by phone, Skype, or walk in, go to rebuildingtheman.com, rebuildingtheman.com, or call 800-411-BOND, 800-411-2663 for counseling service, all right? And, yes, I do sign all the books. When you order them online at rebuildingtheman.com or call 800-411-2663. And we have some amazing books. Amazing. Let me go back to Samantha. And Samantha is a first-time caller from Holland. I heard around the world by everybody and their mama. And Samantha, you still there? Yeah, I'm still here. Okay. Yeah. So so all you need to do, Samantha, what I recommend, mm-hmm. now that you your heart has changed from anger to love, you're born of the Father, mm-hmm. now you just let him destroy all the illusion of your imagination, all the ideas you've had, all the illusion, all the identities that you've picked up over the years. You're none of those things. Yeah. And, and that's why I feel that's like... Mad, yeah. And that's why I feel like you're dying because you have identified. It's like an alcoholic person who called themselves an alcoholic. They now identify as an alcoholic. That's who they. That's what they become, right? And so it's a false identity. Yeah. So it's dying, and the devil will tell you, "Oh, how long is this going to last? Where is God now? Or well, how come this and how come that?" <laughs> but let those thoughts yeah. pass. It's a deception. He does not want to depart from you, but he has to if you allow it to happen. Yeah, I do recognize what you say because I do see the many identities I had, I've built up uh, in my life. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy how, how they are dying. You know, yeah. uh, sometimes it looks like a panic, panic attack or something. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I do... I do know, like, you know, just stay in the present, the God is with me, and then, yeah, it, it does feel like if somebody, something is dying within yeah. me. And the, the funny thing is, like, while that is happening, I do notice that my mind is getting clearer and clearer. Yes. So, yeah, I, do, I, I yeah. do see that it has, the one has to do with another, you know? That's and, right. That's amazing. You know, in the, in the Bible, it talks about one of the guys said that they died daily, and what they were dying mm-hmm. from is exactly what you are dying from now. You're dying from all mm-hmm. these fake identities, these false identities you picked up. Uh, and yeah. the, the, all, 
reputations and being smart and all that is dying. So you're fine. That's amazing. Yeah. And again, well, thank you. I just you really uh, helped me on, on on this journey, you know. So yeah, well, thank stay, you very much. Stay okay. with it. Stay with with it. And I don't care how painful it gets. You stay with it mm-hmm. and just watch it and let it happen. And eventually, it will die and you will live and it'll be amazing. Stay with it, Samantha. Amazing. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, you very much. You're welcome. I tell you, there are ladies waking up around the world. And ladies, you got to do what the men got to do if they want to be free. You must see that you have this anger because a person that has anger is a murderer. You're of your father, the devil. And then read the Bible, hooping and hollering at someone else is not going to do it. It's not going to do it. You must be born again of the heart and die of the flesh, meaning all those ideas in your mind about God or about anything. It's just an idea. It's not who you are. And stop identifying with these things. Don't call yourself these things. You're none of those, but you're building them up because that's what the world tells you. And you'll see you're none of those things. You're neither saint or sinner, you're neither slave or free, you're neither black or white, you're neither um, rich or poor, you're neither alcoholic or drug addict, you're neither homosexual or lesbian or LGBTQ, you're neither, you're none of those things. You're none of those things. Amazing, huh? You've been deceived. And and if you notice all these titles you pick up for yourself, all you're doing is suffering. They don't bring peace to you. You have no peace. But you have titles. Professor this. You're not a professor nothing. You're not a smart person at all. You're none of those things. If you have hate, anger, anger, you're evil. Your mind and body is evil. You're of your father, the devil. So good news. Finally, other than being free, some good news from the Washington Post. The Supreme Court has struck down affirmative action admissions program at University of North Carolina and Harvard. Isn't that good news? Oh, Lord. It's going to be on. It's going to be a long, hot summer. And keeping cool would be the thing to do. Washington Post, the, uh, it's reported that the Supreme Court has struck down affirmative action admissions programs at University of North Carolina and Harvard, that uh, that that re- really is part of racial consideration, saying that they violated the Constitution. Amen, amen to the Supreme Court. Supreme CNN is reporting that the Supreme Court. Guts affirmative action in college admissions. College and university can no longer take race into consideration as an express factor for admissions. A landmark decision, according to the CNN. Now you, the black people are going to have to earn their way. If you want to go to Harvard, you have to earn it. You ain't going to get in there because, well, I don't know. They may still sneak and do it. But you're not going to get in there just because you're black. And the poor Asian people and the white folks who worked so hard to get in these schools can't get in because they're letting you in just because you're black. That doesn't even make sense. It's going to be a long, hot summer. 
Can't you hear the riots already? Be quiet. I can already hear the riots happening. The blacks are burning down America because they've been spoiled and some of their stuff has been taken away. It's like a kid. No, 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 no. Jeb, it's a Jeb, a first-time caller out of Georgia. Georgia, on my mind. Jeb, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, how you doing, man? All is well, sir. Hey, I I wanted to say I really appreciate what you do, and I really look up to you, man. Is it helping you? Oh, yeah. I love listening to you. I think some of the stuff, too, with these people— they're so in denial, man. It's hilarious sometimes. It's sad, but it's hilarious, too. Yeah. It's like, man, I just, all you can do is just move on and laugh about it because they ain't going to change their minds, are they? Right. Most people are not going to change. Only a few will, um, will, will return to the Father. Most are not. They're going to, they love their hell and they love trying to inflict hell upon other human beings. So they're never going to change. I'm telling you. Amazing. Well, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, buddy. I totally appreciate it. All right, man. I appreciate it. Okay. Amazing. Most people are not going to change. Your daddy, your mama, your brothers, your sisters, your friends, your coworkers. But you can change. Only a few. You heard Samantha? She can now see and dine from their own nature, the unnatural nature, and return it to the natural nature. And ladies, you can do it. I hear from women all the time now. They just didn't know they had to forgive their mothers. They heard the mother blaming the father, so they thought the father was the problem. And they tremble and went and forgave their mothers, and they forgave the father for not protecting them because they were yearning for their fathers. And now they're waking up. You can do it, lady. You are not. You don't have to be stuck in your misery. You can be free. But you got to forgive because your mothers have created you in her image as well. That's why you have the same anger she has. You're acting the same way she's acted. And you say, I never want to be like my mama. And you end up becoming just like her. You become just like her. Isn't that amazing? And just like the men become like mama, they have the same mindset and emotions. You do too, ladies. You must be born of the father. I hear amazing changes in the women's form on Thursday night, and you hear them on Sunday mornings. God sent his son for all. All of those who were accepted. I don't give a darn. And some people say, I don't give a darn if he does. Come on, Paul. I won't accept him. Let me go to Justin out of Virginia. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Justin, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Jesse. How are you? All this well, sir. First thing I wanted to thank you for everything you've done because you really helped me out a lot. But um, I have a couple questions for you about the silent prayer, if that's fine. Okay. Um, I've been doing it morning and night, and I'm trying to get it to where I'm always in the present. And I've been working on that. But I wanted to ask you, because um, a few days ago you brought up a verse, I believe, in Philippians where it talks about thinking righteous and noble thoughts. Is that in, I don't I don't know if it was in Philippians. But I was just wondering if you could tell me what a righteous thought was. Um you, you or to think righteously. How to think righteously. To, to think righteously is to have a clear mind where there is no thinking. And what will happen is that uh it will be it will be clear to you. It will be given to you by the Spirit of the Father. 
because you can't make yourself think righteous. There's no such thing as that. But you, I don't know if you heard Samantha from uh, Holland. She said that now that her ego, is, the, the ego is dying, she knows that her mind is becoming clear. When you have a clear mind, because anyone that has anger has a dark mind, a clock mind, a dark mind, right? And when you, as you overcome the thoughts and the anger and all that, your mind will make clearer, and you can't help but think clearly, which is righteous thinking. And when, you, and when you hear the word, when you hear me say think, it's just another way of me communicating with you on that lower form. But you, you're okay. not going to be thinking. It's just going to be clear. It'll be clear. Because that was, that, was, that was kind of confusing to me at first. Because right. Because I'm just, you know, how can I possibly think of anything if all thoughts are lies? Right. You know, I just got to let them come and go. So uh, I would think even like righteous thoughts or noble thoughts would come and go as well whatever that might be. Yeah, that's right. It'll be clear. It'll just happen. Just like all these dark thoughts come to you naturally, you're not in control of those. Once mm -hmm. they, and they will disappear if you stay with it, then clear mind will happen for you. And it, it will have nothing to do with you. It will happen naturally. All right. Well, I appreciate that. A good question. Man. I'm glad you brought it up because when you hear think on, think, righteous thought, the devil going to try to use that against you. And now you're trying to make up righteous thoughts and you can't do that. Thank you, Justin. I hear the noise in the background. Thank you, man. Uh, Paul, can you mind if I ask one more real quick question? If you cut the note, you got to stop the noise for a minute, though. Is it gone? Yes, it is. Go ahead. Because I wanted to ask you, and this has been on my mind a while because I feel like the devil keeps like pushing it to me. So I wanted to ask you, like, if of ourselves we can do anything or we can't do anything, when I hear you ask people, like, have you tried my silent prayer? Like, how is it your silent prayer? Meaning the one that I'm promoting out there. Okay. But it's you don't an, claim it to be yours. It's just, another way like of, it's just another way of communicating. Uh, again, I have to communicate with the folks, right? And it's just like when you hear, think on good things, right? It's just another word. Don't get hung up on words like that. Okay. I just wanted to ask. Yeah, but don't let the devil get you hung up on words. You overcome words because he will use words against you. Okay, I just figured it'd be like a gift from God, but I understand what you're saying. All right, buddy. All right, take care. Okay. It's amazing how the devil used words against you, right? And then if you don't say it the way the devil tell you, oh, why are they saying his prayer? You, you, you know what he means. What the? Uh, Dustin is out of Houston, Texas. Dustin, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Jesse. Hey. How's it going? All is well, sir. Uh, so I was wanting to talk about thought. Okay. And... So you say all thoughts are all lies all the time. Right. Well, wouldn't that have originated as a thought? Would what have originated as a thought? The all thoughts are all lies. No. It would, you would be able to, see, when you get to know yourself and you pay attention to those thoughts, you're going to see because you'll be separated from it. You're going to see that they're lies. You'll be able to see it without having to think about it. Oh, I, I understand what you're saying. I do. Uh, all right. I mean, but like, how, so would, how 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 did the uh, how did you come up with that? Like, how did it? It was given to you. I, I guess you'd say. Yeah. Once you once you go and forgive, and then God forgive you, He's gonna separate you from the darkness of your thoughts, because the only way that anyone's gonna know that all thoughts are all lies, they gotta be able to see that they, oh, yeah. that, they, that they are not their thoughts. They are not creating those thoughts. And that where are these thoughts coming from, right? But you will be able to see it. God would allow oh. you to see that. Oh, yeah. You, you, you try to silent prayer, you can definitely see it. All these right. thoughts running through your head. You ain't got no control over them. Right. Absolutely. Just, so that's where, that's where it comes from. <laughs> yes, sir. Oh, All right. Uh, so also, I wanted to say, 
you know, I am the Alpha and the Omega. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Uh, you say that it starts with you, it ends with you, right? Yes. So, wouldn't you have to go inside and forgive yourself first before you could ever forgive anybody else? Well, once you forgive, you're going to no longer uh, hold anything against yourself or anyone else, but you absolutely, uh, you got to forgive yourself. You have to forgive yourself because once the anger is taken away from your heart, you no longer will judge yourself or anyone else. Yes, sir. Yeah, because it, it, it starts with you. Right. Absolutely. So, so it wouldn't start with your mama, though, right? It, it start with her in that if you want to be free, you got to forgive her. Well, I think you have to be free. To be free, you have to look inside yourself. Right. And that's the only way you can be free. Is, and so the Bible points you to looking inside yourself. Right. And even, even, even what you say with all thoughts, all lies, if you don't have a spirit of understanding, you, you get nothing from it. That's right. It's just words. But it's yes, just it's, it's just uh, knowledge when you hear me say that. But yes. if you go and look on the inside, then it be, the knowledge will fly away, and you'll have the understanding that come from it. Dustin, I got to run. Thank you for your call, man. I do appreciate it. Super Chat. Super, super. Super Chat. Super Chat. Man, amazing how fast this time goes by. Super Chat. Yes, sir. Thank you, Dustin. <laughs> Thank you. Nice. That's good news from the court. Yeah, it is. I wonder what the blacks going to do now. They're going to riot. <laughs> <laughs> I dare you not let me in your school because I'm black. Indeed. <laughs> I know. <laughs> what? Uh, uh, okay. Jesse, Bill Gates has some lab-grown meat for all of us. Doesn't that sound tasty? Says... Evgeny Crosby with a couple of diamonds on D-Live. No, it sounds awful. <laughs> and nothing tasty about that. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I don't know if you put enough spice on it. I saw on American Anchor Baby that enough spice on it, you can even eat rocks. Ain't that much spice in the world. <laughs> <laughs> God Shaves gave a diamond said, When can suffering be overcome? What? When can suffering be overcome? What do you mean? I don't know. That's what he said. Who asked that? God shaves. Uh, God shave. I'm not clear on about the question. Restate the question or make it a little clearer. Thank you. Uh, he also asks, is no self-esteem of the devil? Yes. Nice. One of us. You have made low or no self-esteem your idol. It's your God. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Lord. I feel like he's mocking us, us Christians. Jesse is waving his hands around with his eyes closed. JLP is worship acting is like he's wor worship in a worship in service. Lord. <laughs> I'll be back in a moment. Well. Another hour to go. You run from evil within yourself or outside of self. You got to deal with it. And you need good in order to deal with evil. And God is good. You need to return to the Father. And you'll see within you, he will fight the battle for you. And he will fight it without. Because he will show you how to deal with it. And you will have no fear. Love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your might, along with nothing else. Nothing else means yourself, your children, your wife, your things, your ego, your reputation, and all that. You can't care about any of that. The children of anger will use it to control you. But if you love God, he will renew your mind, and none of those things will be before him. And so when they go after you, oh, well, you may take my body, you may take my things, but you're not going to take my soul. And that's a true reality. Libs cry about affirmative action ending thanks to the so-called Supreme Court. And Idris Elba, the black guy, will not be 007, apparently. 
like I mentioned, uh, first end of first hour. And the wildfires are raging. This is the end of hour two of the Jesse Lee Peterson Show. It is Thursday, Bible Thumper Thursday, June 29th, 2023 A.D. Stay tuned for hour three. Last hour of JLP is coming right up. Back to your calls. There is one line open. You can get in there. Uh, and get on air with the JLP. But first, fake news, not fake news. And after the J.C. Lee Peterson show, do catch, if you'd be so inclined, the Hake Report. And if you don't catch the Hake Report, or if you do, you can also catch American Anchor Baby. Always a cool show. Always great. And a couple of days ago, we had Joel Friday TV on Tuesday. Check him out. Very nice. And there was a Bond Archive Sunday service premiere that happened yesterday afternoon evening church with jesse lee peterson podcast you can podcast it uh bye bye affirmative action coming on sense network cnn reports the supreme court guts affirmative action in college admissions you heard jlp report it earlier this hour the so-called supreme court says colleges and universities can no longer take race into consideration as an express factor in admissions, a landmark decision that overturns long-standing precedent that has benefited black and Latino students in higher education. The majority conservative, so-called conservative, opinion written by Rhino John Roberts, he's the chief justice, claims the court was not expressly overturning prior cases authorizing race-based affirmative action and suggests that how race has affected an applicant's life can still be part of how their application is considered. Huh. The three Democrat-appointed justices, so-called justices, the Obama-Biden women, right, stressed in their dissent that even if the court did not formally end race-based affirmative action in higher education, its analysis will make it practically impossible for colleges and universities to take race into account. In dissent, Justice Sonia Sotomayor, an affirmative action justice, right? (laughs) She calls decision, the decision on the affirmative action, indefensible is her word. The result of today's decision is that a person's skin color may play a role in assessing individualized suspicion, but it cannot play a role in assessing that person's individualized contributions to a diverse learning environment, she said. The indefensible reading of this constitution of the constitutional is not grounded in law and subverts the 14th Amendment's guarantee of equal protection, she wrote. Ignoring race will not equalize a society that is racially unequal. What was true in the 1860s and again in 1954 is true today, she wrote. Equality requires acknowledgement of inequality, she wrote. And Chuck Schumer, not a Christian, called it a giant roadblock in the country's march toward racial justice. No such thing. There are several major opinions left in this term, including so-called President Sleepy Joe Biden's student loan forgiveness program and LGBTQ rights. Also no such thing. Idris Elba is over the James Bond speculation. The actor, according to Comedy Nonsense Network CNN, says he's got turned off from the idea of playing 007 after after the conversation became all about race. What else would it be about? <laughs> Black. Uh, McDonald's' Grimace shake is going viral for the wrong reasons, says CNN. The purple drank... No, not purple drank. That's what Trayvon was going to have, maybe. The purple drink sparked a trend in which people faked their own deaths or pretended to be possessed like like a demon. They don't have to pretend they are. After taking a few sips, wow, and more than a third of the U.S. population is under air quality alerts, according to CNN, Comedy Nonsense, due to smoke from uh, Canadian wildfires. Thanks a lot, Canadian wildfires. Officials are urging people to take safety precautions weeks after a similar wildfire smoke blanketed the Northeast. Over 120 million people are under alerts in more than a dozen states from the Midwest to the East Coast. Some of the worst air quality classified as very unhealthy. Senator over Chicago, Cleveland, Detroit, Indianapolis metro areas. Some improvements expected today. Great Lakes area. So, worst wildfire season in Canada in a while, in a, quite a while, ever, maybe. I'm James Hake. Somewhere in the world today, men have got to stand up strong. 
take the truth about themselves to understand what went wrong. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. I know we can find a way. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up. Uniting the races with truth instead of dividing them with lies. We also rebuilding the family by rebuilding the man. I am Jesse Lee Peterson. Welcome to the third hour of the show already. There is one line open. You can get involved by calling 888-775-3773. 888 888- Seven seven, Jesse, J E S S E. My biblical question for this week: What are you committed to? What are you committed to? We have every way that you can watch and support the show listed on jessaleepeterson dot com slash show, jessaleepeterson dot com slash show, and also if you're out and about. Anywhere in the world, we are heard around the world by everybody and their mama. You can listen to the show on your iPhone, iPad, if you're busy, stuck in the airport, or whatever going on, by calling the listen line at 641-793-1500, 641-793. One five zero zero, and also follow us on Cozy TV slash JLP Rumble dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson and Kick K I C K dot com. Kick is it JLP on that too or just Kick Kick dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. Kick dot com slash Jesse Lee Peterson. All right. And don't forget to follow us at, by hit the like button, subscribe, ring the bell. It's Thursday. It's the last hour of the show today. It is Bible Bumper Thursday. A knee, a knee, a knee. On, our neck. on our neck. Why, George? God, why, George? God, why? 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 I'm sorry, kid. This is igniting. Around this town, we will be dead. I am the daughter of two pastors. I have a strong moral core. I was trained to read and understand the Bible. You will emerge from that as an atheist. Uh, it's a disgrace. Uh, that we're supposed to be transformed by the renewal of our mind. He preached for us and let us, and didn't tell us what it is you mean. In your own words. Yeah, yeah, whatever you want to do. Okay. Well, there's a verse. There's a verse. You want him to preach? Yeah, yeah. Get up and preach. <laughs> what a weak daddy. What a weak daddy. Let them crucify his son like that. What now? You want to get up and preach? Go and preach. And you should have said, no. Not going to do it. Anyway, let's finish up the super chat that we were about to do just before the last break. And then uh, we'll get to the phones and everything else. Super <laughs> chat. Super, super, super. Over on D Live, yet another from God Shaves. We ended with God Shaves, and we're beginning with God Shaves. Says, your mom is really your daughter as a Christian. That's right. Amazing. Men are the head of all women. It don't necessarily have to, it just have to just be your wife or your mother. All women. God in Christ, Christ over man, man over woman. Amazing. Thank you. Star Peterson over on Streamlab says, Jesse, Ask Hank 
where Earl <laughs> is. Did he get so angry that he got a stroke and he dead? <laughs> Hank is in trouble. Who? Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Thank you. I don't know where he is. <laughs> <laughs> Raphael, A, as in animus, on uh, Streamlabs says, here's a little money to put towards your setup. What a mess. They black. <laughs> <laughs> hey, black. Hi, your little business. Thank you. Raphael A. is in animus. Says, answer to the biblical question. What are you committed to? I am committed to total destruction because that's what came to mind first when I read the question. It makes me think maybe it's better for me not to commit to anything because I wouldn't know what to commit to. What the? <laughs> What? Nah, amazing. I'll put my little two cents in on Sunday if the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise. The key on Streamlabs. Jesse, do you think a return to the Father is the rapture? Because it is not us, but Christ who works in us, Philippians 2.13. We are already seated in, the, in heavenly places, peace of mind. Our temple belongs to our Father, and his will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That's deep. You know, I was thinking the other day, and I may have mentioned it to myself, I may not, where people are waiting for Jesus to return. People are waiting for the uh, revelation. Is that what they call it, right? The end time and all that. Yeah, rapture. And, and stuff. what they don't know is that everything has already been done. Christ has already returned, and he lives in us. He lives above, but he lives in us as well. Everything is done. It's finished. And when you overcome the thought, you're right about that. You will see. And, and, and they're waiting. They're still waiting. It reminded me, it reminds me of what I re read about the Jews, that when Christ was on earth, they didn't, some of them at least, didn't believe that he was the son of God. And I guess, aren't the Jews still waiting for Jesus? They're still waiting for M Moshiach will return, is coming. That's, a, That's their word for Messiah. Oh, just like some of the Christians are still waiting for Jesus. Yep. And it's, it's been done, folks. The kingdom of heaven is now. Eternal life is now. Uh, the death has been taken away from you. And that's why when you die this false death of the ego, you will live and you will never think of death again because you see that death is an illusion. Did you know that death is an illusion and there is nothing to be afraid of? No. I mean, I've heard you say that, but I didn't know. I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> the word death is just a word now. You never have to die. You die of this false nature, which is the nature of the devil, the identities that you think that you are. The ideas and the plans that you have, you die of all those, which is an illusion. But there is no death other than that. And then you would never think of death and again. When people are afraid of death, they're afraid of a word. That's all they're afraid of, a word. And, and things been built around that word, and now they're convinced they have to die. What a mess. Thank you. That's deep. Uh, Prince Vibes. On Streamlabs, did Jason apologize to his mama for living, still living, in her basement? <laughs> I bet he giggles every time she asks him for money. Ask! Also, <laughs> also, my mom saw a UFO when she was 13. It disappeared before my granddad could see. But my mom thinks my dad's the devil. <laughs> so take that how you will. <laughs> Oh, amazing. Thank you. <laughs> God Shaves gave a diamond. What a mess. God Shaves with yet another diamond. You don't forgive only God. You communicate that. Yeah, you admit that you're wrong for playing God by hating. Anyone that has anger is playing God because they hate. When you hate, you judge. Amazing, huh? Thank you. Another from God Shaves. Blacks want affirmative action and loan forgiveness. <laughs> it's going to be a long, hot summer when they find out they can't get into the school. They're going to find, believe me, the university 
I believe we'll find some kind of way to cheat and let them in anyway. Yeah, it'll be de facto affirmative action, which is what we have everywhere. Yeah, amazing. Based Nation on Rumble, a Rumble rant. Generous one. Riddle, a guy named Friday have a show on Tuesday. What color is he? <laughs> he black. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> A guy named Friday have a show on Tuesday. What color is he? <laughs> he <blood. laughs> and a few uh, biblical question responses, if we have some time. Yeah. Uh, what are you committed to? Life Enjoyer says life. Amazing. Uh, Peppa, Peppa Seed says paying these bills. I don't know if I answered that. I said that one already. Paying these bills. Amazing. Thank you. Um, one guy who's one I forty one A Z eighty staying the course and waking up and turning back to God, seeing the thoughts more and more distant. He says, oh, "Amazing! Remember just before we went to break, we were holding up holy hands to Jesus." You were who's we? The editorial we? Hassan was doing it too. No, he was laughing. I didn't see him. Oh, no, he was doing it. That's what got me doing it. I saw him doing it. Oh. But you just didn't see it. Right. And it will make me think about the Christmas thing. We have come into this house to lift up holy hands and worship you. We have come into this house to lift up holy hands to worship you. <laughs> I thought the break was coming already. I'm like, what? <laughs> worship you. And God is going, what the? <laughs> and you feel so holy when you're doing that? <laughs> worship. And tears start to come. You really feel holy then. I liked the chant, the but the real Christian chant, not the chant that you played at the beginning of the show with that gal who said, the sparkle... Oh, <laughs> I never heard of Sparkle Creed. Yeah, I liked the, I guess it was the Apostles' Creed when we were all read it in, or say it in unison. I kind of liked that. I never heard of Apostles' Creed. The Apostles' Creed? Yeah, what's that? It's because you're Baptist. <laughs> what a mess. Everybody got a creed except baby Jessica's daddy. I think it's the one that says, I believe in God the Father and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and different things about them. Oh, somebody Something made that, that up? Effect. The Apostles made it up, I think. And they call it the Apostle Creed? I don't know. You have to ask somebody else. But why do you like it? Because I liked, well, it's kind of cool. Somebody, people have turned it into a song. And then I also like the sense of speaking it in unison. And it's not this lifting up the hands and singing stuff. We have come <laughs> into this house. <laughs> To lift up holy hands and worship <laughs> you. I guess I like this okay. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> For the Nish. podcast listeners, he's lifting up his hands. Uh oh. Nick said that you lift up your hand where you give where you give your life to Jesus. <laughs> Come up to the front of the congregation. What <laughs> oh, a mess. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so, GL Lundy on Gab answering the biblical question What are you committed to? I am committed to the Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty, maker of the universe and all that is in it, and to the indwelling Holy Spirit. All else is just fodder and human theater. Amazing. I put my little two cents in on Sunday. We'll p finish up later. Okay. Thank you all so much, Super Chats and all that. Amazing. Let me go quickly to Alpha Male, a first time a call out of Puerto Rico. Alpha Male. Alpha Male, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, Jesse. Uh, good morning. Good morning. Uh, How do you pronounce your name? Abimel. Abimel. Yes, sir. I said alpha male. Alpha male? Oh, I would like to think I'm an alpha male. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Go ahead. Hey, Jesse. I, uh, there was a, a, a while ago, uh, I don't know if it was like half an hour ago, a caller called in. They called in uh, asking about uh, thoughts. Yes. 
and they had mentioned that, you know, the idea or that all thoughts are all lies all the time. Right. Uh, that person was asking if that was a thought, and I automatically, after hearing you speak, it came to me this uh, this saying that all thoughts are all lies all the time is not really a thought. This is more to do with truth. Yeah. This is this has to do with the light that the Father brings to the world and offers those who wish to be illuminated by it, and it brings and it and it shines on the reality that anything else that is outside of the light of the Father are just thoughts that corrupt us and make us doubt ourselves and make us doubt of each other and brings a lot of division in the world. Absolutely. You are an alpha male. Well, thank you. (laughs) (laughs) Because that is the whole truth and nothing but the truth. You're absolutely right. All right, I've been listening to your show for a month now, and, and uh, yeah, keep up the great work. Uh, we got a we got a we got a country to save. That's right, man. That's amazing. You're absolutely right, and thank you for that input. That I really, really do appreciate it. Thank you, Abamel. Well, we appreciate you. Take care, man. All right, buddy. All the way from Puerto Rico, I've been there. It was nice on the beach. It was beautiful. You ever been to? Po- have you ever gone to Puerto Rico? I have not. It's very nice. Well, I don't know what it's like now because it's been a number of years since I've gone there, but it was really, really nice. I stayed at the Marriott there on the beach, and it was uh, 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 right on the beach, too. Um, nice. Amazing. Amazing. Let me go to Josh, our first time call out of Arizona. There's one line open at 888-7753-773. Abigail is absolutely right. Anything outside of the light? Is an illusion. And those thoughts are illusion. They're not real. The emotions are illusion. Though you feel them in your body, they're illusion. They're not real. Amazing. Let me go to Josh, a first time call out of Arizona. Hey, Josh. Hey, Jesse. Um, Josh from Arizona here. I'm uh, 22 years old. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay. I'm 22 years old. I recently came across your channel, I would say, like two months ago, and I recently came with my journey to God through um, a lot of self, like, you know, self trials. Um, and I just want to, I have a question. Okay. How can I be a preacher to help my black brothers and sisters to want to build a home with God instead of a home of flesh and destruction? Because I come from a very, just like, bad home, and my woman, she comes from a household where she didn't have a mother or father to discipline her. Are you married? So we're both learning how to, huh? Are you, you want me married? Yes, we we, we got married um, last month. So you're married at 22? Um, yes. I've known this girl for two years, and I understand all, like, you know, the things she went, I know it seemed like, you know, very early, but it's a lot of, um, very, a lot of women that I kind of, like, felt, like, gave up on, like, the, the, very pretty, very dumb, the uh, lesbians, and, you know, just a lot of the um, people that, like, talk down on men, and she doesn't talk down to me. She wants she wants to follow God just as much as me. Does she so obey like, you? Yes, she wants to. She wants to. Does she? She wants to obey, but she doesn't know how. What do you mean by that? So, it's like, she doesn't understand when she's disrespectful because she didn't have a father to tell her, the shit that she does is disrespectful. Uh, I'm sorry. The yeah. stuff that she did. Don't curse. Sorry. The, sorry. The stuff that she does is disrespectful. So it's like, I, I want to be able to tell her in a way of like, I understand. I was like, I'm aware that you don't have that like guidance, but how can I be that guidance for her? Um, have you overcome your mother? Yes. I love my mother. She has an overcome her, but I love my mother. You- like, even with all the stuff she put me through. I live close. I don't live with her. I'm not like that. I have my own apartment, but I do live close to her. I keep. I try to keep uh, close contact with my mom. I forgive my father too. I'm just trying to if I could get her to work her through forgiving both of her parents. Have you went and forgave your mother for what she did to you? Yes. You told her. Have I told my mom? You talked about me. Yeah. Have you told your mother that you forgive her? 
I don't I don't think I ever told my mom I forgive her, but I did tell her I love her. But how can you love her when you have not forgiven her? Hello? How can you love her when you have not forgiven her? I, shoot, I, I never thought I had to, like, damn, I, I, thought I, I, I thought I forgave her. I never thought about that. And, and why not? How are you going to help? I, how are you going to help? Your wife, you're married at 22, trying to help your wife when you haven't worked on yourself yet. Why Why didn't you go and forgive, think about forgiving her, your mother, for what she's done to you? Is accepting my mom for the person she is forgiving her? No. Okay, so what is forgiving her? It's going to her, forgive her for what she's done to you, impose her will on you, uh, resenting your father, turning you away from him. Uh, no, my mom wasn't okay. So it was my household was the opposite. My dad was the my dad was the female that turned me away from my mother. My dad. How do like, you know? What do you mean by my mom? How, huh? What do you mean by that? Okay, so I I forgive my father because he was the one that like my mom. She got with my father. My father like and she tried to build a family with him. She came from California to get with him. They did a year with me when like I wasn't born out of wedlock. Like, they did a year with me. However, my dad ended up finding another woman, getting her pregnant, but still trying to tell my mom to still, like, keep her family together. But she, in her own mind, was like, you know what? This is too much. She went back to Cali. So my dad was the one being like, oh, your mom left us. It was all this. To when my mom was just like, that's why I, I feel like there's no reason to forgive her because I was never mad at her. And it was so the more the anger would be towards the father. Why were you angry at your father? Because he made my mom seem like a very evil person when she really was trying to do the right things at the right time. What What did he do to you that made you angry at him? Um, nothing really. It was really the so perspective wh- so that. So why you know, are you Why are you angry at him if he didn't do anything to you? Because he did it to my mom. What that had to do with you? Damn, you're right. I'm sorry. Why are you cursing? <laughs> So, <laughs> your father, you have no reason to be angry at your father. He didn't do anything to you. It's because you have falsely, your mother have made you identify with her. And, she, and your mother have done things to your father. Are you mad at your mother for what she's done to your father? Um, I know my mom has, like, you know, um, so slight um, black women get on this and her. So, she probably... Did a lot of like, you know what I'm saying? So are you, are you, know? you mad at her for what she done to your father? <sighs> no, I'm not mad at her for what she done to my father. So why are you mad at your father? What he done to her? And between the two of them, it had nothing to do with you. You're right, and that's the part I need to just grow up on, yeah. like and just like move past. But how do you freak, like? How do you go and like? How would I be able to move forward with having a kid without forgiving my parents? You won't be able. You do, you're going to do to your children what was done to you. But if you go and forgive your mother for turning you away from your father, even that anger that you had, that was because of your mother. Your mother played victim and made you identify with her, and it turned you away from your father. And so forgive her for that. I'm sorry, mother, for resenting you for that. You turned me away from my father. And God will forgive you. Then he would take the mother's identity away from you and for, and give you back your identity, which is him, and you'll start to grow from a normal nature rather than the abnormal nature of emotions and anger. Thank you, Jesse. And, and that's why this woman you're with, it is your mother, and you got to catch the same hell from her that you've caught from your mother. But if you forgive your mother... You do the silent prayer and let those thoughts go. You'll see how to deal with your wife in the right way. What's the silent prayer? Debbie, uh, go to rebuildingtheman.com slash church. And the rebuildingtheman.com? Silent, yeah. And the silent prayer is zero, www.silentprayer.video. And start doing that so God can bring you out of your imagination. And you say you live close to your mother? Yes. Why you live so like, close to her? I'm, because I wasn't able to, like, she wasn't in my life when I was younger. She would only get, like, a month to visit me, and my dad had custody. So, like, now that I'm older, I want to, like, at least be able to have her be able to see me. Why? How old are you? I'm 22. 
She, she doesn't need to see you. If she want to see you, she can FaceTime. <laughs> You're right. And, but and she she trying to raise, I have two other brothers, too. They're like I feel like they weren't able to see me, like, you know, be able to big brother. So I want to be at least in, like, the same state so I can, like, see them graduate, see them, like, grow up, too. But they're, not, know, why, why, they're not your children. You have a wife now. You're supposed to move far away from her family and your family because if you don't, they're going to destroy your family. Why do you feel like you're so important? They need to be seeing you and you need to be seeing them. Because I feel like I made a lot of mistakes. Well, but you make it, but you're I, making more huh? mistakes. That's not the way you straighten out a mistake. You stop making mistakes. When you when you see you made a mistake, you don't make more mistakes. But you stop making them, and then you can be free. You're right. Uh, I think that's all I really got to talk about, Jesse. Yeah, I appreciate the talk. Okay, you're welcome. Do the silent prayer. Forgive your mother for what she's done to you. And, and and don't have any expectation from her. Don't don't expect her to apologize or not. Whatever she does is on her. If she apologizes, that's fine. But God will forgive you when you forgive her. All right? God bless you, Jesse. All right, but let me know how it goes. I'll call back. All right. 888-7753-773. Victoria out of Texas. Uh, let's see here. Victoria, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Good morning. Jesse, how are you today? All is well. How are you doing? I'm doing much better nice. than I was. I called a, la- uh, a couple weeks ago, and I was telling you that I was having problems with my back and uh, blah, blah, blah. Oh, yeah. You, had a, and- <laughs> you were carrying on about a, be- a beta back. A beta back. And um, I want to... Put a shout out. I don't, is, I don't remember if it was Kevin Ho or somebody that gave a super chat that said to do core training and whatnot. And I agree with him 100%. And I want to thank him for that. Um, you don't have the bad. Put me on, you, go ahead. Well, it put me on the journey to, uh, well, one, calm down from it because it was very painful, was, meaning I don't have that anymore. So it's the fine pain. now? It's Well, of course. Uh, I've calmed down. I don't overreact because, you know, when you overreact, then, you know, that just feeds the ego and feeds Satan. But knowing and, that, what? why did you overreact? And, and, and you just said it feeds the pain and it feeds Satan. Why did you overreact if you know that you're not supposed to overreact or you shouldn't overreact? Because I would... I was in my head over it. The pain got so much that it just took over. Um, I guess just, you know, overreacting to it is just thought, you know. Um, and and now, knowing and, that all thoughts and did are you all calm, lies. Did you calm down after the pain left or before it left? Before. Okay. I, I did. I calmed down when I started to feel the pain because my husband was like, "Just calm down over it, you know. Let's let, let's break out the yoga pad for you. Let's do the core training because you know he was in the Marine Corps for 15 years, so he knows all about the body and how to work out. So he so he's what been did you me. what did you learn from all this? Well, just your- to calm down and not be in my head and just you know let God do his will and I've I've been doing great since then Um, I've been doing great amazing well I'm glad Victoria I'm glad the pain is gone and that you learn from it it's amazing thank you so much I gotta take a break back in a moment back in a moment hope the treasure chest open on D live After a while, that when these guys overcome their anger, they have amazing ideas about starting a business. But because they've been told that 
you don't get a loan from the bank or if you don't have a five-year plan or if you don't do this, and it's just simply not true. It's the first step with faith, then all things are possible. So, But the most important thing is to return to the Father. That yearning that you have, that emptiness, that void, is not for more stuff. It's not for more friends. It is a return to the Father because there's no way you can return to God and be angry at your earthly father. So thank you all so, so much, right? People around the world donated to Bond at rebuildingtheman.com or they call 800-411-2663 and we're still committed to pointing the right way for men and women to return to the Father. Okay, folks, a couple of things. The hate report is coming up at the top of this hour. The hate report, H-A-K-E report dot com. And um, from 9 to 11 a.m. Pacific time, and James Hake is on fire. And after the hate report at 12 noon, the American Anchor Baby Show, the American Anchor Baby Show, at 12 noon Pacific time, riding high with the ink, American Anchor Baby. Not high on pot, but high on a plane. All right. At 12 noon Pacific time. I want to, um, we're going to get to all your super chats and everything. I want to go to Grace out of Canada. Uh, Grace, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hi, Jesse. How are you doing today? All this well, Grace. Thanks for calling. Good. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I just wanted to ask, um, cause lately I've been noticing that like within myself, like I tend to be like an ungrateful person right. or at least it's not me, but it's like, I can see that like, it's almost like I don't appreciate what I'm seeing. It's like, even when God shows me things, it's like, I fall into that, like despair within my head and those thoughts that kind of like take me away from having that gratitude for what I'm seeing in front of me. And I'm just wondering, like, how do you, how do you learn to have a grateful heart, and how do you practice that? So when you when you you waking up now, you God have forgiven you waking up. The fact yeah. the fact that you can see that something is making you think that you're not grateful, and that mm-hmm. you need to develop a grateful heart or thankful heart, it's all lies. That's not you falling into this idea of not being thankful or grateful. Those are not, those thoughts and those feelings are not you. So when it happens, just let mm-hmm. it pass. The real okay. you it, it, is not feeling any of those things at all. You don't feel grateful or you don't feel ungrateful because there is no, there's no feeling to gratitude or thankfulness. There's no feeling to it. It's just a word. So we, when it comes like that, just let it pass. Okay. That's, okay. That's so, not you falling into it at all. Okay. Because, like, when you, like, you know how, like, when you hear, like, the fear of the Lord is, like, the beginning of wisdom? Right. And I get that because it's, like, it's, like, you're in reverence of God because you see, like, you see who He is because He lets you see things, right? Like, He right. opens your eyes to see. Yes. And it's, like, is that... Is that not gratefulness? It is. So it's not a feeling. It's the fact that you can okay. see. And that's all it is. And it's 
this word gratefulness or thankfulness is a made up word and it, it deceive you and it make you think because if you think that you are grateful when you're not mm-hmm. feeling what you think gratefulness or thankfulness is, you're now feeling ungrateful or, or not thankful, right? It's just a, mm-hmm. it's a divided person that think that way. It's just a word, let it pass. The fact that okay. you're seeking the kingdom shows that you love the Father. You want you return to the Father. You want to forgive. But let the word thankfulness go. Okay. Okay, that, that sounds good. Thank you so much. And it, it kind of makes me think about, like, um, your biblical question on, like, do you commit yourself to anything? Because I've been thinking about that. Yeah, what um, are like, you committed to? Yeah, and I would... Like, even having this conversation right now, like, I, my answer is more cemented on the fact that, like, I don't think I I, I should be committed to anything, and there's nothing that I, I actually even want to commit myself to, because anything that I do, I, I develop an identity out of it. Yeah. And I noticed that as of late, especially now that, like, I'm seeing more and more, every little thing that I focus on, I make an identity out of, whether I want to or not. And it becomes an idol and it becomes a God. And I start to worship it because it's like, it's like, that's what the ego latches on to, to hold on to you. And it's like, if I didn't commit, commit myself to anything, then, you know, the ego would die all the more because there's nothing to hold on to. That's amazing. Great. Grace, yeah. I want to re- respond to that so bad. I can hardly stand it. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. I'll wait until Sunday. Yeah, I put my little two words in on Sunday. But yeah. I love that response, and I do want to tell you that. But I put my two words, my little two cents in on Sunday. and mm-hmm. and But let all words go because they will divide you. You want to become whole, and right now you yeah. are becoming whole. Amazing. Amazing. <laughs> awesome. Thanks so much, Jesse. All Have right. a great day. You too. Thank you, Grace. Amazing. What are you committed to? I want to show you what happens when you don't. And then I get back to the phone calls, both of your super chat. I really want to get to this to show you what happens when you don't overcome thoughts. When you don't overcome thoughts, these kinds of things and other things happen happens as well. Watch this from Breitbart, a Paris suburb uh, was struck with major violence as residents protested the shooting of a teenager by police. Watch this compilation. The morning after the night before, the Paris suburb of Nanterre is almost unrecognisable. Burnt-out cars and debris litter the streets, a result of Tuesday night's riots, which led to dozens of arrests, as well as minor injuries to many policemen. The reason for the protests? The death of a 17-year-old, named only as Nail M, pulled over for supposedly breaking traffic rules. Speaking in Marseille on Wednesday, French President Emmanuel Macron called the killing inexcusable. I want to say to his family, all our solidarity and the affection of the nation is with you. An adolescent was killed. It's inexplicable and inexcusable. An eyewitness filmed the police performing the check, one pointing a gun at the driver. When Nael tried to pull away, the officer fired at point-blank range, killing the teenager. The police initially said that the driver tried to hit the officers with his car, but video evidence appears to contradict that claim. The officer who fired the deadly shot was taken into custody, accused of voluntary manslaughter. Incidents of police shooting at vehicles has risen since the law was relaxed in 2017, allowing officers to open fire if a fleeing vehicle poses a danger to public safety. Campaigners have long railed against what they say is widespread police brutality in France. Videos like this, they say, are vital proof of what so often goes unseen. All that is evil. It's the same spirit around the world. Same thing. Absolutely the same thing, folks. Let's say that the, if the police was wrong, I don't know there, but if it was wrong, why was there a call for a riot? It was between the cop that did the shooting and the boy that was killed, and that's it. And the parents, let the cops deal with the parents. It wasn't called for a riot. 
It was none of those people's business, to be honest with you. But evil people always roaming the earth, doing things to try to get a sense of life for themselves because they're so empty. That's evil. Living in their imagination. They feel good about burning down the city, giving themselves a false idea that they love the boy that died. They don't. It was for their own ego purpose. And the stupid so-called president, whatever he is over there, he had no been doing what he did. He could have gone, if he had to visit with the family, go privately and do it. The police are working to protect the innocent from the criminals. I don't know what that situation was, but it wasn't called for a riot, that's for sure. That's what's happening in my country. This is from the blaze. What happens when you live in your thoughts? When you don't overcome thoughts, here are, here's another example. This is from the blaze. On Monday evening, Chicago police scrambled to respond to hundreds of teenagers terrorizing businesses and neighborhoods. Watch this from WGN. This is the scene that unfolded just after 10 o'clock last night. Hundreds of teens took to the streets, shutting down Belmont for hours. There was no celebration yesterday. It was just pure chaos. Rady Hashish is the manager of the Slice Shop. The restaurant just steps from the Belmont Red Line stop was surrounded. He shared this video he took from inside the store of teens dancing on cars and drinking in the streets. CPD officers worked to control the crowd and move them out of the area, but the teens left behind a path of destruction. People were horrified by the extent of the damage this morning. Shoe prints on cars, hoods dented, windshields broken. Grace Rowan said she even heard gunshots and was too scared to leave her apartment. It has been very chaotic, and as somebody who's lived in Lakeview for honestly the past three years, it's very scary to see how things have changed over time. People are hoping the city steps up to prevent this from happening again. Chicago police arrested two people, including a 15-year-old girl. She has been charged with aggravated assault of a first responder, resisting and obstructing traffic. Amazing. See? Evil. Affirmative action children being black excellence. That's black excellence from affirmative action people. You got to overcome the anger. You still think that thoughts and anger is good or good and you think it's from God? Jesus was angry too. How dumb can you be? You cannot be conscious and angry. You cannot have the mindset of God and be angry. Well, how about when you tore down the temple? How about when God had vengeance? It's just evil thinking. If you have anger, you are a murderer. Here's an example of that from the blaze. A 24-year-old Florida mother has been charged with murdering her two-year-old son. Official says she strapped him in a Booster seat for 15 hours. Watch this from WFLA. Left outside this RV where family says 24-year-old Rebecca Gussage Johnston lived with her two-year-old son Eli, eight-month-old daughter, and their father on this commercial property. The report says deputies found a two-year-old boy dead here, suffering from head trauma, wounds, and bruising. When they arrived, what they saw was just horrific. They saw a child strapped to a chair, signs of extreme neglect, abuse. Gussage Johnston admitting to strapping Eli in a booster chair as punishment for him acting out and screaming. The report also says Eli was caged to the chair for 15 hours. The next morning, Eli's mother told authorities she found her son flipped over and watched him suffer from seizures and shaking uncontrollably. And we know that every parent's gotten frustrated, but we could have helped her with some tools and tips and tricks to be able to deal with that frustration so that child wouldn't have wound you know, had this horrible ending. Nikki Daniels is with Champions for Children. Their mission, child abuse prevention. Daniels says one in four kids in Hillsborough County are victims of child abuse or neglect in their lifetime. For us, it's about attachment and bonding. Because if we can help parents attach and bond to their children and then give them the tools that they need, child abuse is much, much less likely to happen. That's a dumb Nick, whatever name, Nickley, whatever. She has no idea. Always bonding. Mama want to stay bonded to you. That's the problem. 
Leave people alone, mama. That ain't going to stop child abuse. Overcome the heart. Change the heart, you can change everything. Everything will change for the good. And last but not least, in September, according to CBS, this is from CBS, in September 2020, a 36-year-old was killed after she was beaten and raped by a group of teenagers. A Milwaukee man, Kamari Lewis, will spend more than two decades in prison. Watch this from Fox. A Milwaukee teen is sentenced to 26 years in prison for the brutal rape and murder of a woman in Washington Park. This happened back in 2020. 19-year-old Kamari Lewis was found guilty of harassing E. Lee in Washington Park, beating and sexually assaulting her. She was found unconscious and died three days later. During the sentencing today, Lewis shared what he would say to the victim if she was still alive. I'm sorry because I didn't even know you, but I chose to treat you as if I hated you. I really wish I could fix what happened because I honestly do believe no woman on this earth deserves to be treated the way you were that night. On top of the 26 years in prison, Lewis will serve 19 years of extended supervision. Meanwhile, 17-year-old Kevin Spencer was also found guilty in this case. He'll be sentenced in August. You still think that anger is good? And you think bonding? The world always wants you to bond to everything but God. Bonding? If you just teach the mother how to bond to a child, there would be no child abuse. Less child abuse. What a dumb female. That doesn't even make sense, right? But that's what the world does. It bonds you to all kind of false identities. All who has anger is a murderer. Anger is evil. And you have fear and you're wicked. Anger is of your dad and the devil. And you call it Jesus. What a mess. Let me go quickly to... Wanda out of California. Uh, let's see here. Wanda, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Jesse Lee? Yes. This is Wanda. You're the on the air. Spoken maze. The soft spoken maze. I saw that in the comments about me one time when I called. I wanted to call you about um, you're always referring to Bible thumpers and people that believe the Bible. And my question to you is, what do you believe the Bible is for or where did it come from? It's, it's just a road map back to the kingdom of heaven inside of you, the words in your heart. And God inspired men to write this, but, um, um, and they instructed the people where to look for the word of God. In the Bible. Right. Okay, so you do believe that God inspired the Bible and that we should use it as a reference. Well, he didn't inspire the Bible. He inspired the men to, who wrote the Bible. He gave them the words well, to write. that's what I mean. He gave them the words to write in the book. That call, at first, it was just letters to one another, uh, to right. others. It wasn't a Bible. But those words came from God to those men, and they put it in writing. Okay, I have, and the other thing, you used to, I've been listening to you for several years, and I don't listen to you as much as I used to, because uh, you seem to have changed. Now you're more uh, condemning of people and judgmental. What do you but mean, condemning and judgmental? Everything. Like, if you have somebody that comes on, what a stupid person, and you don't even know these people. Maybe they did a stupid thing. But you can't just go around calling people names, and everybody has a problem with their mother. Their mother was evil. Did you forgive your mother? Woman? Did you Do forgive your Did you forgive your mother? Yes, I did. And, and so you forgave her for my being, mother was not evil. You gave her for being good, or you forgave her for being evil. I didn't forgive my mother for being evil. Did my you mother forgive was not her? Evil. For, did you forgive her for being good? I forgave my mother for a specific thing that she did. So was that what I she did, was it good or was it evil? It wasn't, it was neither. 
Oh, it so was just it was neither ignorance. good nor evil? No, it was so, just through her not knowing. So you forgave Everybody, her for nothing? I forgave her for not knowing. Did what you forgive did. her for nothing? I don't understand what you're saying, Jeff. You So you judge your mother for no reason? I forgave my mother for a specific thing she did because she did not know any better. Did you judge your mother for no reason? You're not going to put me off in a corner. I'm not trying to put you in a corner. I'm trying to get everybody. an understanding. I did you forgive you, your mother for nothing? I forgave my mother for a specific thing. Thing. That's did, what I said. Did you judge her for uh, doing nothing to you? Jesse, I told you what I gave, forgave my mother for. Did you a forgive specific. her for doing nothing to you? Why do you keep saying that? You're not answering the question. I answered the question. You want to you want to throw people down the rabbit hole. So no, I'm not. I'm this. asking. You made a statement. You said she wasn't evil. And I asked. No. I, I asked. Did you forgive her for doing good? You said no to that. And I asked, did you judge her for no reason? She did nothing at all, and you judged her for no reason. I, you don't judge people for doing good. So did you judge but your mother for doing evil? I judge my mother for lack of knowledge. Did you judge your mother for doing Honestly. evil or good? I'm not going to say that. Okay, she I got to run then. I'm running out of time. Super Jack. Thank you, Ron. I can't play. Super chat. Super, super. Super chat. Yes, she sir. Play. I got to have play. Her, her name is her name Jason. What the? <laughs> from from uh, New York. Buffalo. Super chat. A super chat from D Live. Uh, Wrinkle Hands Bing Bong says, shout out to Henry and Games for Rec. <laughs> and includes some emojis like a, the Star of David, a menorah. And the uh, Israel flag. So shout out to Henry and Games for Rec. Israeli stuff. Israel and Jewish stuff. Nice. Uh, amazing. Thank you. And you got to go to Israel, folks. You walk through the Bible. It's beautiful over there and amazing. Okay. And thank you to the top contributors. That is... Pardon me. Pardon the delay. God Shaves, Evgeny Crosby... Games for Rec, Green Wall, Kid Gumbo One, Wrinkle Hands, Bing Bong, Die N D, and Bludgeoner. Thank you guys for the support. Thank you all. And I think that's all for now. Thank you guys again. Amazing. Thank you so much for that. Uh, become your own man. Become your own woman. You hear that one? That woman says she forgave her mama for nothing. <laughs> well, she claims she wasn't evil. She just didn't know better. But if you but then evil, the, and then you said, "Did she do evil?" She, that, and she wouldn't answer that either. Right? The heck, what? Nah. What the heck? And then she said, "I'm trying to put her down a rabbit hole." <laughs> Pull her down a rabbit hole. <laughs> but not, I mean, if you had done evil, and you judged her, what was there to forgive for? If you do good, there's no reason to judge. It's a good question. What? the? Uh, Ridiculous. And then, oh, you trying to put me down a rabbit hole. <laughs> Let me go to Mark, a first-time caller out of Phoenix, Arizona. Mark, welcome to the show. You're on the air. Hey, good morning, Jesse. Uh, hey, uh, Mark. How are you? All is well. All is well. Hey, I just uh, want to shout out to your crew that you have there with Anchor Baby, Hank, and yourself, and everybody in the background doing the good work. Thank you, but it's Hake. I love Hake. it, and I, I love you guys. Thank you, man, but it's Hake, H-A-K-E, Hake. not H-A-K-E. Hake. <laughs> Not A J and K. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. But thank you. I'm brown. <laughs> he brown. Hey, uh, can, can I ask you a question? Can you say beta? Beta. Beta. I love it, man. Beta. <laughs> beta. 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 I used to be a beta. I'm not beta anymore. Nice. So beta. we're not doing that anymore. That's right, man. That's <laughs> right. All right. No, um, I, 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 I'd like to hear uh, the um, biblical question. Real fast. What are you committed to? I committed to. Okay, that's a good one. I'm going to have to think about that one. All right, well, call me tomorrow if you come up with something. I'm out of town. I'm out of town. I'm out of time. And I'll be back tomorrow if the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise. If the Lord is willing and the creek don't rise. Thank you so much, Jesse. You guys have a great day. You too, buddy. I, I am so out of time. The hate report is coming up now. The hate, H-A-K-E, the hate report. 
Facebook.com from 9 to 11. And then at 12 noon, the American Inca Baby Show is on at 12 noon, all right? Become your own man. Become your own woman. Forgive mama. Forgive daddy. God will forgive you. Do the silent prayer, www.silentprayer.video, and watch those thoughts so you can let go. Let go of all your identities and all your thoughts and all your little stuff you're holding on to, all right? I'll be back tomorrow to Lord is willing and the creek don't rise. Open line Friday. Have a good day. We can have faith in the unseen while we stand up and get back to the way we were designed to be. Get on the track one time. Joel Friday here. Look, stand up, stand up. We got fighting to do. We gotta show him who boss. He put a Viking in you. He put that lightning in you. Igniting the truth. But you beg and blame and lie and hate and never wanna stand for the truth. Huh? So what you planning to do? You understand in the loop. You better go talk to your mama. Better stop at the drama. Better drop all the trauma. Boy, you better stand up and up. Put your hand up and hut, huh. cause if you don't then we lose, and then we gotta hear the fake news, whoa. So here's what I recommend. I invite you to download my silent prayer, and I want you to start doing it. You just download it, get the points of how to do it, and then after a while, you just do it on your own. It's going to point you in the right direction that your life will be returned to you from God. He will give you your life back because anyone and all people who has anger, they're not themselves. You are the person that you are angry at. That's why it's so important to get to know yourself so that you can see who you're angry at. And if you're doing the hooping and hollering prayers and things like that, some people get up, oh, praise the Lord, hoop and holler, bless my mama, bless my daddy. Continue to do it. Do both. You will see if you want to stay with the hooping and hollering or do you want to be still and know God. So my gift to you, no charge, at rebuildingtheman.com slash church. Like, my cousin, like, sent me you, and I, I thank him for that. It was more of a, you know, he thinks the whole, but, uh, and like, every, everything's a joke. That just adds a little spice to it. But in the heart of what you're saying, yeah. there is real things going on. Yeah. People want to overlook that. And yeah. I'm telling you, Mr. Peterson, I'm not one of those people. And I thank God that, you know, he showed you to me. And sometimes we just need some Jesse in our lives, I guess. Thank you, know, you I wish we had more brothers like you. We need more brothers like you. This because a lot of we don't have more most guys that can, you know, stand lead black people into the right direction. And I thank you for that because a lot of people will be like, Man, it's still going on, it's racism. Yeah. And I try to tell them, like, watch his show, listen to this brother. He's telling the truth. Take no thought about tomorrow. Yesterday doesn't exist. And you're gonna see, man, God is with us and all yeah. is well. <laughs>